All right, Joseph, say hello to your adoring, loving public. Hey, guys, hello. how you doing? Oh, we, we live? We live? You are now? We are live. All right, guys, we get this show rolling one way or another. <laughs> Welcome back, Tokers and Toquettes. We are back with another episode of In the Weeds. We are very excited to be talking to Matt Bubba Berger, uh, known across the globe as... Hey, Joseph, say hello to your adoring, loving public. Oh, here we go. We got some more issues. Anyways, yeah. we got Matthew Bubba Berger on with us, guys, from Bubba Kush Brand. He's, brand launched, he's launching a brand new brand. He's launching a brand new product, um, new to the market. There's a lot of crazy things to discuss today with him. Uh, Matt's been on the show before, so we're really excited to have him back. Um, lots of cool things to discuss, guys. Uh, so we're going to roll right into it this week because, uh, from what I understand, Matt's pretty busy working on this project, Matt. So uh, why don't we start off with uh, introducing yourself, Matt, and uh, what you have coming out right now. Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I am, uh, yeah, I'm currently about to launch this new product. Uh, uh, tech that was developed um, in Uganda patients. Uh, with malaria. So they were being given tincture medicine and Dr. Tom Chapman uh, hey, was the doctor uh, uh, administering the tincture. And uh, he noticed that, you know, most of the medicine was swallowed. Um, they drop it under their tongue. They'd sit there and, and basically reflex swallow most of the medicine going through your digestive system, making it, you know, that much less effective. Um, so he figured out a way to lower the viscosity with the super secret uh, sauce and uh, then later applied it to cannabis. Um, I got a hold of the product and I'm typically not a CBD believer. Like I've never really felt much difference before or after. I know you're not supposed to get a psychedelic feeling, but I should notice some kind of head change, I think. Yeah. Um so yeah, every CBD product I've ever tried never did anything to me. And I sprayed the stuff in my mouth. And I immediately felt, you know, a head change. I felt uh, the only way I could describe it is calmly energized. Mm -hmm. Like I felt, I felt like I could really charge the day. And it, it was, uh, it was an interesting feeling. So I was uh, immediately a believer. Um, made uh made a deal with the guys in uh the uk isomist is out of the uk and uh you know at the end of the day i got a nine-year exclusive contract with them and uh, our goal is you know to of course build bubba kush brand um using or having that in our line of products but also you know private labeling to other companies and we will be covering both CBD and THC markets. Obviously, the THC market's going to be a state-by-state -state, um, endeavor. But, you know, I'm really confident in this product. Everybody who I've given it to is amazed. I've only had one or two people that say, you know, it didn't do anything to them. But there's always going to be people with different body chemistries. But... For the most part, I'd say 99% of the people I've given either the CBD to or the THC product, they were amazed. In fact, I've had four people get too high, which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing, but nobody really wants to hear Charlie Brown's law. Right. But uh, so, yeah, I tell people to be real, real careful with it um, when I do launch the THC brand or the THC products. Um, I might have to go with a, a, a lighter concentration just so people <laughs> aren't like blown away or get too high. Right, well, what's, start what's unique about this product, though? Head rushing. Right. Well, what's unique about the product, though, is it's. Uh, you know, there's a medical application to it, and it's it's designated oh, dosaging, correct? Like even the dosages are, are, are metered to a point, correct? Yep. Yep. It's an accurate metered dose. Um, with the COVID, we had uh, a little bit of a hurdle getting the right bottles with the right atomizer. 
so our, this first soft launch um, isn't the final bottle that we're going to use. Um, all those bottles are being shipped in presently, but I wanted to do a soft launch and get, you know, some kind of feedback uh, before we went full board, which we're ending up going full board anyway, because this stuff's amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, so that, I mean, it, it's, it's different from any tincture, any nano product. Uh, the problem with nano products is they don't really tell you what it is. Um, you have no idea what, what you're ingesting and it encapsulates, you know, a single molecule, which makes it so tiny that it technically mm. could split a cell wall. So nanotechnology oh, hasn't yes. fully been researched or studied and could potentially cause cancer. Um, right. You don't want your cells splitting. Uh, the other difference between this and nanotechnology is we can lower the viscosity of a full spectrum or broad spectrum oil. So you're getting all the medicine in the plant. You're getting the CDD, the CDG, the, you're, you're getting a full, you know, distillate formula um, that has the full entourage effect. Whereas mm. when, that's one of the things I, you know, really am not a fan of is isolate. I don't really believe that one cannabinoid without another can really be medicine. Mm -hmm. I, I am a firm believer that you need all the cannabinoids and terps, if possible, interacting with each other to give you that full medicinal value of the plant. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're, you know, we have a big advantage over all of that. And again, you know, I keep telling everybody it sucks to swallow. Why? Do you, <laughs> why do you want to swallow? <laughs> this, I mean, that's a, that is the beauty of this part. <laughs> I mean, and we talk about a lot with tinctures and oils that people ingest. Like a lot of that gets lost in the digestive it. system. Right. Because yeah. it takes a couple minutes. Uh, it's like two and a half minutes for this to absorb in your mouth. So, Think about how many times you swallow in a two and a half minute span when you're trying your medicine, right? So most of it ends up in your digestive system. And, and as most patients, to, yeah, yeah, most patients have digestive issues. Right. right. And who, who wants to sit there with a puddle of juice sitting under their tongue while they're, you know, also salivating? And I mean, there's no way that's going through the membrane of your mouth, of your mucous membranes. Um, uh, because you can tell you're swallowing most of it. Where this stuff, it, it's kind of like, I don't know if anybody remembers the old Banaka spray, <laughs> but it, it's such yeah. a fine spray um, that you don't have to spray it under your tongue. Uh, even though we yeah. say, Not even though we sure. say it's a sublingual, su uh, sublingual uh, yep. medicine, uh, it, it really goes through every, you know, your whole mouth it goes through every mucous yeah. membrane in your mouth, um, and you know, directly into your bloodstream. So you, you're swallowing almost 0%. I mean, you can never say, you know, but right. it does, it goes right. You feel it pretty yeah, I mean, much immediately. And then it also, you feel it immediately. And it also has a, a longer lasting effect. Um, yeah, some of my we, friends that have major back issues, my friends that have major just, back issues are saying, you know, that, this stuff uh, is amazing for my back because it's long lasting. It's not just, you know, a mm. half hour. Or so it's like, I feel it for hours. Mm. Um, so I, I totally believe in it. I, I'm loving how it's helping people. And uh, I love the fact that it does get you high. <laughs> <laughs> we just happen to have a cartridge. Most. Yeah, most every vapor cartridge I've ever tried, most everything that I've tried edible-wise, uh, spray-wise, tincture-wise, never really did much for me. But mm. this stuff really does. It's it's amazing. <laughs> when we looked at, when you like oh, we yeah. discussed, we looked at. My... Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say when the, when we talk about the science behind it, and you and you bring up these these issues, and I think we hear about it a lot from patients is like is are these products working for me uh you know we see a lot of mis mis uh, labeled products in the industry we see a lot of false products out there uh and we see the patients who are struggling with it. now i just happen to have a, a a sample of this bottle that i got from you 
and I can vouch for the effectiveness of it. It is a major product that does literally what's nice about it, like you said, it, it goes right into your mouth. So within 10 seconds, you're starting to get an effect from it, right? Um, and then it lasts like an edible. So, you know, instead of smoking, instead of using carts, which we've all discussed the, the cart issues many times on this radio show, um, and acetates and, and things that you can put in these carts, this kind of this kind of takes all that stuff out of the equation. And now you mentioned a couple of things about, about this product that I wanted to point out too. Like this could be used in a, in a, in a sports market too, right? I mean, these guys could literally oh, be spraying absolutely. this stuff on the sidelines and, and, and well, go right back in the game. It. Golfers love it. Um, you know, I, I, next week we're talking to, you know, f- football people and uh, we have lots of sports personalities that are already interested in it. Um, CBD it, in its full, you know, broad spectrum formula is awesome for your body. Uh, mm. It's great for your joints. It's, it's great for, uh, you know, for any athlete, really. Mm. But yeah, golfers really love it. They're selling it and they sell CBD at golf courses now at resorts. Um, it's actually, you know, people are really starting to understand the medicinal values of cannabis products. Yeah, what's great about that, especially in pro sports, is we've seen the shift, right? Now we're seeing NBA, uh, the NFL uh, are, are, are now talking about dropping CBD, and we've seen baseball do it this past year, um, where they've dropped it off and then now focus more on opioids, which, you know, that's the discussion we should be having more than anything, right? Um, but now that does leave a market open for CBD products and how that's going to work in a professional industry, especially in sports. Um, and then now with a product that you can offer zero THC and an easy application that doesn't require anything, then it's a, that could be a game changer. Um, especially again, when we talk about these, these, these cart markets that, you know, it, we, we, people are smoking hot dog water and getting sick, you know what I mean? And now there's, there's some research that, that and, and conversation going around that, uh, and this is an interesting thing. I'd love to hear you guys' uh, reaction to this, but I did read an article, and I'm sure Brandon read it, and I'm sure most of us probably saw it or heard about it, was COVID, right? They're now pointing the finger to some of these car issues were COVID-based issues back in, you know, last December when they, they're now suspecting the first round of COVID hit us, and it was this crazy flu that nobody thought about. So, you know, we, there's some interesting science coming out. Um, now, Bubba, we, we're talking about the Isomus product, right? Um, and you'd mentioned that you, you know, you, you have a, a brand that's launching. Tell us a little bit about this brand that you have and you're putting together. Um, uh, well, Bubba Kush brand, it's been, you know, a long time coming, uh, industry, uh, issues. I never really had the best luck with, with, uh, finding the right investors, the right partners. I'm sure anybody that's a veteran to this industry, uh, has been through the, some of the same things I have. Um, but yeah, I f- figured out a way to do it without investors, without partners, uh, well, with partners, but not investors. Um, all mm. people with the same mindset, the same goal, you know, the ambition is to build Bubba Kush brand. It's not money. It's not fame. It's not any of that. It's that's what we all have, you know, the same mentality. We all have the same vision to build the brand and everything else comes after. So I think I found the right people. I got the right people on the bus. Um, I got the right people in the right seats on the bus. And uh, we're, we're figuring out, you know, where we're going from here. Uh, we have lots of relationships coming online uh, with multiple grows, multiple uh multiple partnerships with other products uh, all that is you know right here right about to all happen at once and i didn't need a single investor that only cared about money and didn't care about you know what the vision is and that's you know build the brand help people and mm-hmm. make money later you know it's mm-hmm. more about you know it's more about the brand and getting you know getting this out there right so yeah <laughs> I, I think brand. that's all i can say yeah we well, have, let's, uh, let's, talk, let's talk about this brand for a minute because you have a unique brand i mean you guys are you're putting together all sorts of different cool unique items but 
the brand is kind of like a it's it's really kind of near and dear to you right because it's like this it's it's like the venice beach uh of the 90s right this is what we, we what you're what you've established but, here right yeah i mean my my culture you know my upbringing has always been surf skate snowboarding uh, um uh, and uh i i always believe that you know Bubba Kush brand and the OG Kush brand were beach bread, uh, beach bread brands. God, that's hard to say. Beach bread brands. Say that three times. <laughs> um, and and that's the you know that's the that's I, I want to appeal to everyone, um, and everyone can vibe with the beach. I don't know anybody that doesn't like the beach. <laughs> right so, but i don't know how to i don't know how to portray the brand any differently you know it's an active mm. lifestyle brand i wanted to appeal to sports enthusiasts everywhere from the football players the mountain climbers the surfers the skateboarders i wanted to portray an active lifestyle i i hate the i hate the connotations that you know cannabis users are lazy you know, I, I love uh, Jim McAlpin, uh, his uh, 420 events every year where he gets um, uh, the 420 games. And, you know, he gets a bunch of people together. He has BMX, just uh, BMX and skateboarding. Uh, he has triathlons and, you know, it's a full athletic cannabis event. And I love I love that he does that, and mm -hmm. Public Coast Brand will be a big sponsor of those events. Uh, I plan on sponsoring. You know, I w I'd love to be you know the first surf skateboard teams out there, first sp cannabis sponsored race cars. Um, <laughs> I want to be associated with an active lifestyle. Mm. Well, that's a big that's the hardest thing that we as in the campus community have to break with people. And unfortunately, it does apply to some people. You know what I mean? Like, we, let, let's be real here. But uh, the the there's a lot of people in the world right now. And we and, you know, our show literally exposes us all to to, to prove the point that you can be a campus consumer and, and, and make things happen. You know, we talk to doctors, lawyers, you know, we're putting together companies. You guys are cultivators, you, you know, all these amazing people that work hard, get up every day and, and, and have almost more drive or as much drive as anybody else out there. And that's the biggest stigma we have to break in this industry. Right. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, no spring chicken, but I still go to the <laughs> skate parks. Uh, I still hit it as hard as I can on a snowboard. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't like to surf California much, so my surfing is limited to where I go and travel to. But, you know, right. I still have a very active lifestyle and I've been smoking cannabis my whole life. I started growing, started throwing seeds in my backyard when I was 13. I was putting seeds in my agriculture class in high school when I was <laughs> 14, 15. <laughs> no, thank no. you, Mr. Ascona. If you're out there, Mr. Ascona, thank you, no, he thank knows. you for never busting me. He, he, he'd just chop, he'd chop them down. He'd let them get big enough that we felt some sort of gratification that we did something so we could pat ourselves on the back. Oh, you grew something. Good, Bubba. Right. And then he'd chop them down. And bring him home and clone him out, right? Yeah, that's what he probably did. He probably brought him home. He All the teachers was, are like, yo. Oh, he just teacher. knew that we had the best weed in school. He had to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, now, I mean, we talked about the brand now. We're talking about some fun stuff. Like, literally, like, everybody, I mean, there's not one person out there that I know that doesn't know the name Kush, right? Uh, whether they know the story, whether they know the weed, whether they know anything about it, Kush is is, is now a, a word in our vocabulary uh, in this in this country, right? Um, and then the people that know that we uh, know it's that's literally band aid. Well, <laughs> seriously, uh, it's getting to that point, man. You know, you Google Kush and and like things that pop up, you're amazed by it, even on top of it. Um, you know, 
How you know? Obviously, tell us a little story about the Kush. You know, what I mean, we know about the original, the OG Kush in '92. We've heard stories about '97, but for the people who don't know the origination of Kush, because this wasn't like you know a single project. You know, you guys, you know, there, there's a group of you guys that kind of went on with this, and we all have stakes to the game. But tell everybody how how Kush came about. Um, I guess the uh. So my boy Alec, Alec Anderson, uh, got a bag of, bag of uh, weed down in Miami. Um, it was a bag of Super Knot, and he pop seed. We pop seeds out of it um, up in Orlando and Gainesville. Um, there were five of us. Well, six of us, if you include uh, my old roommate Kelly that uh, really took the strain and started growing it and started killing off everything else that we had and started crossing it. The, the first cross, the first Kush cross was something called KY. Uh, we did a KX, a KY, and a KZ. And the KY was the only one that did uh, what we really wanted it to. So we kept the KY going. So when I moved out to California, so we... We started it in Gainesville, and then I brought it out to California in 96. Uh, moved in with Josh D. Um, we had the, I flew back to Florida, grabbed all the cuts, moved in with Joshy, and uh, we had uh, the Bubba, the KY, and the Kush. Um, the Bubba was just solely Bubba at that point. It wasn't crossed with the Kush yet. Um, and uh, so we were growing those three. The KY started doing weird stuff. It started giving people rashes. Uh, Joshy would get rashes from it. Uh, Kenji uh, from the Cypress Hill Gang. Uh, he, uh, he'd get rashes. They'd break out on his arms, little red bumps. So eventually we killed off the KY. It was really weird. Um, and then we just had the Kush and the Baba, and we had a purple indica in the room at the time. And then the Kush from Aphrodite when Joshy and I were living together and pollinated the Baba. And we sold a bag to uh, Kenji and B. Uh, B Real and Kenji came over and grabbed the ounce of ounce seeds in it and brought them back and we popped them and that was the birth of the butter Kush, and that was 97 mm -hmm. and kush kept going of course we never got rid of that uh by about 98 99 ish um people started singing about it i think the first song is dr green thumb uh, that's well that was the first song uh, Be Real ever mentioned OG Kush, and um, he confirmed that with me. Actually, I called him up. I was like, what's the first song you mentioned, Kush? So that was uh, <laughs> that was Dr. Green's. Um, and then from there, you know, over since then, over a million plus songs have mentioned Kush. Mm -hmm. I think over 600,000 have mentioned Bubba Kush. Um, I think uh, Cypress years, Hill. Yeah. I think half of Cypress Hill's uh, career is off Bubba Kush, right? Just rapping about getting <laughs> yeah. high in Kush, right? Uh, <laughs> no, nobody, nobody's better than Cypress. Those guys are the best. <laughs> we love those yeah. guys. Uh, those I mean, guys that, and that's part of the story, right? I mean, the Bubba Kush brand was really. I mean, the Bubba Kush was really established I mean, uh, with those guys, right? The dude, they they helped one hundred percent getting the Kush as a household name. Uh, same, same with Snoop, you know, all, all these guys. Dre, um, everybody was singing about Kush back then and still is. Mm -hmm. It's a phenomenon. It's, it's really crazy. And I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm blessed to be a part of that history. It's kind of really cool. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, how does that make you feel, man? I mean, you, you know, you, you... it's it's almost surreal. Like, I don't really think of myself as uh, that fortunate in a sense. You know, I think it's just that, ah, just 
how I am or how it happened or you know, I don't think of myself as uh, anybody special. Right. So it's really surreal. I'm just a normal dude. I'm just a grower that happened to find God, Holy Grail, almost. <laughs> right, the magic, the magic <laughs> bean, right? Really. Yeah, right, <laughs> magic bean. Um, and so I mean, I, not, you know, all my friends deserve credit as well. You know, the, the yeah. six of us that you know started it uh, and named it. And, you know, we got to give credit to Foodie's older brother for naming it, mm-hmm. and. You know, of course, back then we had no clue what Kush was, if there was a Kush Valley region or a Kush mm. Mountain, or we had no internet. So it's really, you know, coincidental that there is a Hindu Kush strain. Mm. And, you know, some people are saying that they're tying the, tying the lineage of the Hindu Kush to the OG Kush genetically. And I still find that true that'd be the world's biggest coincidence in the history of the world right <laughs> we, the same strain and we just we just happened to have named it what it already was called that's right yeah. that'd be amazing it's amazing so i, I mean i mean I, it, it really has to be they say it really has to be one of the most cross strains out there really right everything yeah i mean there's a whole kush I mean, there's almost a whole category. It's, yeah. You got, you oh, got yeah. us, uh, Alex, and now you have Kush. It became its own. <laughs> its own. He, it literally genus. owns the Indica category, right? <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, it, there's only a very few strains they could actually just name, and everybody will know. You know what I mean? Because uh, I mean. Even in the descriptions, it's like, all right, you know, there's like headband, there's Kush, and it's like, all right, when you get a headband, everybody knows that sensation. When you talk about Kush, everyone's like, yeah, I want that Kush feeling, you know what I mean? And people don't realize the the, the indica side of it. Um, it's just, it, it's a crazy indica strain, right? It, it's it's a crazy strain. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> right? it, I mean, it grows, grows like a spindly sativa. But it acts like an indica. Um, it's just one of those rare things that you know. It, so it, it's just another, I guess, uh, another fact that that discredits you know the consistency of everybody believing that you know sativas get you focused, sativas get you energized, sativas mm-hmm. do this, indicas make you couch, indicas do this. Well, then you find the strain like Kush. Where you can't really put your phone what it is because right. it grows totally different than how it affects you. Um, most people just automatically assume if it's sativa, I'm going to get this feeling. If it's indica, it's going to get this feeling. But hmm. they don't realize that it's really just the region that it's grown in. You know, hmm. indica is a low or a high mountainous uh, uh, plant, whereas Sativas are typically, you know, tropical and, and they have a lot of competition. So they grow really big and bushy. Indicas don't have that much competition because they're like high plains deserts and mountain climates. So they don't have much competition for light. So they grow short and stocky. Mm-hmm. But that's not the same that one of them is not producing the cannabinoids and the terpene profiles that would lend to a sativa effect or a so-called sativa effect or vice versa i'm glad we i'm glad we brought that up because uh you know we talk about a lot being that that's kind of like going to the wayside this indica sativa um hybrid kind of theory because (laughs) i mean for a while now but like i mean we as the guys within the industry see this but when we still see labeling and we still see conversation hear conversation from people that aren't necessarily on that that same understanding of you know, root analysis versus what these effects are and that, you know, and, and that the people can have different effects based on the same exact cannabis plant. And like, you know, Bubba's saying, you know, there's a ma- there's- And also on their, uh, and also on their endocannabinoid system. You yeah. know, everybody's got a unique fingerprint. Uh, you know, everybody's going to react to medicine differently. Everybody mm-hmm. produces different cannabinoids indigenously. 
in their own body, let alone what you're adding to it. Right. And I mean, so, you know, everybody's got their formula. And we say this a lot when we talk about the medical side of cannabis, which is, you know, I, I don't want to say it's just because it, this only pertains to cannabis, but we even see this in the pharmaceutical companies. That's why there's multiple options that doctors have to give to you because you respond differently to different products. So all of our body makeups do respond differently. Um, and then there's also tricks to kind of trick your plant, right? I mean, you know, some of the things we heard, you know, if you want an indica heavy kind of effect to your, your grow, you kind of let it outgrow the trichomes, right? Or you cut it early, you cut it late. So, I mean, there's so many different variables of, of, of what you can find in the market nowadays. Um, and then now everybody's just crossing everything anyways to what we consider a hybrid, right? Yeah, everything's a mutt. <laughs> <laughs> everything's a mutt now. But that's not to say we're making some beautiful mutts. No, no definitely <laughs> I picked up some gorgeous stuff in Long Beach from uh, my guys at Canasova yesterday, and I, I'm just blown away by it. And it's just a cross between, you know, eight different strains that made one strain and crossed with another strain that had eight different parents to that. And at that point, it's a mutt. You don't know what the hell you're getting. <laughs> but it comes out beautiful. Right. Wow. Well, the funny thing is, is some of the people's favorite grows wherever, hi, buddy, wherever, um, like seeds on the ground or like this weird bag seed that no one knows where it came from and it just grew. And 90% of the time, these stories grow into stuff like this, which is, which is great to hear these great stories, you know. Um, now, Bubba, uh, one, one quick question I want to ask you. Because you've been in the industry for so long, I mean, you, you've you've seen cycles of of legalization and, and the industry come and go. Um, what do you think about the current state of legalization? What's the biggest difference you've seen in a few years? And now you're on the West Coast, and, and you know we are here in the, on the East Coast, so we we've seen things differently. We're a little bit behind on you guys, but uh, what's the biggest thing that you see that's the I guess the most positive thing in cannabis right now? Um, right now. It's so, you know, we're at the end of another election. Can you guys see that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. It is so tasty. It smells like Dark Star, but it tastes like something I can't put my finger on. It's amazing. How guys down in Canada are killing it. Um, right. So yeah. as far as legalization goes, you know, Trump goes back and forth. You know, we, we all thought he wasn't going to mess with the cannabis industry, but now his best friend is messing it all up. And um, and then, you know, if Biden's elected, he's, he's no more friendly. Right now, you know, they're doing another push to, to get in our business. Um, uh, but at the the end of the day they're wasting their time i mean the wheels turn mm -hmm. it's, it's past turning it's turned we mm -hmm. have over over 50 or over 50 percent of the states now if i'm not right. incorrect you know 50 percent um, of states 70 percent support across the country yeah there's no turning back right now it's only hurting their careers with the small factions or large factions that are pushing, but at the end of the day, 70%, those numbers don't lie. So mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, what I'm happy about is the acceptance, the worldwide acceptance. Uh, you're having people that uh, would have never, ever, ever said cannabis was okay. Um, and yeah, I just lost my feed. Hang on. We're back. You know, you have these little old ladies that would have called the cops on you for, you know, smoking weed on the street if they drove by and smelled it. Now they're smoking it. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to say it's cool to be a hypocrite, but the education is out there now where people are understanding, you know, that the veil's been lifted. Mm -hmm. You know, the emperor does, you know, the emperor wears no clothes and they, can see it now you can see that uh it is truly beneficial um what they've been told in the past are lies and propaganda and you know on their you know last 10 20 years of life 
why not, you know, be as happy as possible. And if it's benefiting their friends, they're going to try it too. Mm -hmm. So that's why all these, uh, you know, old folks homes and, and is that politically correct? Can you say that? Um, all, these all these retirement villages and all these, you know, they have their own delivery services. They have, you know, their fully acceptance of cannabis and CBD medicines. And that's what I like about legalization because it is opening everybody's eyes. And yeah. I have construction going on here, obviously. These guys are due on the roof. So what's just up, guys? Little, just a little history of what's going on here. I'm in uh, my buddy Jonathan's house. Uh, that's Jonathan. He directed uh, Butterfly Effect, wrote and directed Butterfly Effect. And then we nice. A final, a couple of final destinations, or one of them he wrote. And anyway, so this house. When is, when is he going to write the Bubba Kush story? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, he needs to get in the documentary world. I do keep telling him that. So, <laughs> so this this used to be. I don't know if you can see what's going on, but this used to be Betty Davis's house. This was her first house. It was a hunting lodge. Back in the day in, in, Cal, in uh, Hollywood, when he bought a house, you got a free hunting lodge to boot. So they give you a little hunting lodge up here in the hills. And this was Betty Davis's. Uh, a handful of other people lived here after that. But the coolest one was John Densmore from The Doors. So John Densmore added that second part. This, it used to just be this little, little tiny thing. Mm -hmm. And then John Densmore added all of that. So this is where they wrote the song Love Street. So all the doors lived in this neighborhood. And Love Street is actually the corner store down at the bottom of the hill. And it's the country store where they all used to hang out. And uh, yeah, cool little history. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Steven Tyler lives like eight houses down that way. And there's a bunch of freaks in this neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so we see you living it up the right way, right? Uh, I mean, so COVID, yeah. I mean, COVID, so, how has COVID affected this has been you? My COVID, yeah, well, this is my COVID hiding. You know, I, I, yep. I, I needed, uh, I needed to come out here. I, I uh, have a relationship with Solister Labs here in LA that helped, helped me uh, get this first product off the ground and, formulated and mixed and properly done blah 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 mm -hmm. um so i didn't want to get a hotel well you couldn't really all the hotels were shut down so coincidentally my buddy jonathan had the he, he moved to wales recently he had to fly back because he was renting as this house and the tenants buggied left it a mess and he had to come back and fix it up to get it ready well then covid hit and he got stuck here. So he's like, okay, I'm just going to renovate the whole freaking house and sell it. Um, eventually, not to be anybody's buying houses right now. Um, but uh, so I was like, hey, I'll come stay with you and keep you company. Because he's here all alone. His family's in Wales. And what better chance do you get to spend with an old buddy? You know, we you know when you're married with kids how much time do you get to spend with somebody right so this was a perfect opportunity to hang out like we were kids again <laughs> and you're still getting work done yeah yeah I, I yeah i got everything done i needed to pretty much on time or maybe a week or two delay but you know that was out of my hands you know covid slowed everything down from packaging the shipping to anything you needed made to getting the right things made even yeah it's been a hurdle but i made it happen and we are <laughs> launching we are soft launching i repeat we're doing a very soft launch out there coast with you guys and uh and then uh, i move all production for uh, a cbd product to colorado um and yeah getting all the relationships going for thc thc will be thc product will most likely be launched here in in california first um and then uh 
once that launches, we'll start uh, introducing flower. Uh, I have all my genetics gathered and uh, about ready to start the grows all back up. So the genetics are here very mm-hmm. shortly after, along with a host of other health supplement products and anything else I can find that can help people. Right. Now, there's social media up now, right? You have a website going so people can go check stuff out, what is available at the moment. I yep. uh, see a little bit more information about these products. If you guys want to reach out and learn more, just uh, hit them up through the social media, hit them up through the... the... Yeah, that's a badass, a badass grassroots hats coming. They're on those the we're excited show. about. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... Finally works... getting those made. Right, so there's apparel, there's there's going to be gear, there's going to be smokers uh, products, uh, there's going to be the uh, this this health product line, right, is uh, the big yep. focus right now. Uh, so there's a lot of great things coming down the pipes. Um, the, yeah, the new thing really with cannabis cool is, stuff coming. yeah, the cool thing about the cannabis industry right now is, is like you said, it's and the unique thing about the COVID thing. And I think uh, we're all kind of seeing right now is that the, the, the cannabis industry is either thriving in certain areas or it's, you know, we're seeing the right impacted areas. It's where it's, it's, it's been impacted the most, it seems like. Um, but the industry seems to be overall doing well. Is that, is that a general, is that a good general assumption or? Um, I think it's finding its, its way um, slowly. You, you had a, you know, the big influx from the big guys, the med men's and everybody that came in real strong and faltered. And uh, uh, you still have a lot of the, the grassroots guys still hanging on and, and kicking ass, you know, like uh, Verde, Verde of Colorado, still probably one of the best dispensaries in Colorado, if not the best, definitely mm-hmm. one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, they're going strong, still operating, not at a mom and pop level, but they're not, uh, they're not, you know, anywhere near being a med man. You know, they've stuck to their, their roots. They've stuck to their beliefs. Um, they haven't let anybody come in and water down their name. Mm -hmm. Um, so you still have a lot of those very well respected uh, dispensaries that are scattered so they're still holding on and doing well mm. um, again you know it's brand loyalty and and also growing good product right it's, that seems to be the hard part in all this right yeah well you know the the masses tend to not care you know so much or not know really what mm. good quality cannabis is and and how well it's grown you know i i see people show me og kush all the time and they swear up and down that it's my cut and i look at it and i'm like dude that does not i can smell that it's kind of og kush but i mean like it's definitely kush i can smell the kush in it but it doesn't break apart right it doesn't you know the kush when you break a nug up of kush it it breaks in kernels it specific little kernel sections and it's an oily plant it's not so sticky as much as it's oily when you rub it it oil it makes your fingers shine Mm. it's not so much that it sticks together but your fingers are coated in oil Mm. and a lot of people that show me these cuts that you know definitely have my smell just don't look right or it's smell or or it's or a Tape. They don't have that that oil coating, you know, teeth coating oil. God, I wish I had a bong hit of some OG right now. But you know, <laughs> I, what I'm saying that the Kush has that certain coating that it does. The worst crush i've ever seen them and it's and it's such a thing to fuck up i mean mm. it's a hard strain to get perfect but it's also hard to fuck up because it's so good you know mm. i mean if you just if you properly maintain yep 
any other major disaster, it typically grows by itself, mm -hmm. giving it, you know, decent newts, newts and stuff. But I don't know. People like to over phosphate, I think, everything. I think that's one of the biggest killers is all the, all the uh, enhancers, all the bud enhancers. It ruins the bud. Everybody wants to improve their weight so much that they don't care about the quality anymore. They're like, oh, right. we're getting five pounds of light. I'm like, okay, yeah, I bet it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't... Well, that's the thing. I, I typically don't believe it. We talk, yeah. we talk about chemicals in cannabis all the time, right? That should be a whole that should be a whole show based on itself. Yeah. Chemicals in cannabis, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the things that we see back on test results and stuff like that that get reported um, are kind of scary, man. I mean, and you, mm -hmm. you kind of hit the nail on the head. People are using the, these things to really maximize and tighten up these nugs. And I mean, we see it out here because you know our craft, but looks nothing like this commercial weed that we see, right? Like you shouldn't be able to bounce your nug off of a off the floor or break something with it, right? Um, you, you know who's really badass right now? If you go into a dispensary and grab a jar, uh, cannabiotics. Mm, those guys are, uh, yeah, those guys are killing it. Nemo over there, he is, he knows what the fuck he's doing. Mm. Those guys, I, you open up a jar of one of his jars, and you're like, how did you package this so perfectly? And I mean, it, it's. It's like somebody, one of your buddies, just gave it to you out of his grow. Amazing. So if anybody well, wants some to see how, you know, and dispensary, amazing dispensary you be. Go check those guys out. Find out where they're being sold. Well, yeah, the uh, there's some people doing great stuff. There's some people doing crazy, 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 crazy smaller stuff. All of our internets are going crazy right now. It must be that time of day where everybody's getting on. So, um, congratulations on getting this product launched. I mean, it's a big one thing we want to say to you guys. I know, I know it's been a, a long journey for you, <laughs> a stressful journey for you. Um, and it's and it's not going to end either, right? It's like global domination. No. But at least it's going to be more fun this time because I don't have the nervousness of of a investor looming over me with the wrong beliefs and misconceptions and and uh, not being from this industry is really what it's about. You know, everybody who everybody who's involved in this product or project uh, involved in Bubba Kush brand and Southwell distribution. Uh, you know, we all, like I said, we have the same mindset. We all come from the same mentality and, and we all have the same love of cannabis and it was never done, for, you know, for money. It was a labor of love that actually paid us, you know, which few people end up doing in their life. You know, my, my one friend that I'm most jealous of is, uh, my buddy, Sean, I, I nicknamed him. Uh, <laughs> I won't tell you his nickname. Anyway, he, uh, <laughs> he's the most jealous. I'm most jealous of him. All he does is surf and fish. He has a charter boat that charters in Costa Rica and around the South America. And he surfs all day and fishes. He's got the best life in the world. Mm. And he makes a living at it. Mm. So I think, you know, I'm very fortunate to be doing what I love. Yeah. And I was very fortunate to be gifted, you know, the Kush and then followed up with the Bubba Kush. Yeah. Well, I know you're, uh, you're to come. Yeah, many right. More to come. <laughs> well, I know you're a true inspiration to everybody in the cannabis industry because, again, it's like there's nobody that doesn't know Kush, right? And, and we all know Kush in a certain way or fashion or form throughout our lives. And, I mean, I remember, I do. I remember being in Boston, and the only thing I would buy was Kush, and it was, it wasn't cheap back then, and it was two hit shit, and it fuck, you know, it was the only thing that would uh, make me feel good at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So the the history with it, it's been long, long, long time, uh, and like the state, and, and just to have the name in the market's been unreal for you, and, and, and a huge hats off to you. Because again, man, you're an inspiration to people. Every time right. we talk Bubba Kush, it's everybody knows what it is i mean everybody wants genetics everybody wants a piece of it, all part of it because they they've, they've seen you grow so it's been a uh, hats off to you um 
let everybody know how they can get a hold of you and then and, and figure out what this product is and a little bit more information on, on the internet. Yeah, you can you can watch all this uh, come to life on uh, well, we have bubblecushbrand.com. Um, that's uh, where our shop is. Uh, and also you can buy our CBD products there. Um, and then uh, you can hit me on Instagram uh, at bubblecushbrand and also uh, at the Bubba Kush as well. Um, everything is starting to switch over to the Bubba Kush at Bubba Kush uh, site or page now. Um, but either way, you can hit me on either one. And uh, no, I look forward to any feedback or compliments or comments. Or I love compliments. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know now before you go, but I know I know you have stuff to do and, and things to get, to get going on today. I want to open up the rest of the panel to to talk to you guys. I know Thomas uh, want to talk to you. I don't know if he's on camera right now or not. Um, but you know, he he was he was fortunate enough to get a, a little bit of the testers. Um, I know Timothy. If you guys want to ask anything to Bubba while we have him here. We'll we'll give it we'll give this show over to you guys for a minute. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, Bubba, I just wanted to uh, say that I absolutely love the Isomis. Uh, I was able to try it um, shortly after I had uh, a pretty extensive knee surgery, and I was up and about when I wasn't supposed to be, and I had a bunch of uh, fluid drained off my knee that morning, and I was grumpy as all hell, and I was being a total dick to everybody, um, Joe included. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got a little, a little bit of the ISO mist and I took a few sprays of that. And within two minutes, I was calm. My pain level had dropped significantly. I climbed back in my car and I said, what the hell was my problem? Man, I need more of that. <laughs> it was, it was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Nice. Nice. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is amazing the feedback I'm getting from it. And that's, that's why I pushed full forward into doing this. Uh, and you know it's it's helping me it's helping me first build the brand like I said with without any investors I'm doing it all by myself and keeping the keeping the dream and focused with the same mentality. Mm. Absolutely, I mean everybody loves to, uh, to to smoke. Everybody enjoys to to have a little wreck time. But when it comes down to it, what you're doing right now is just amazing for for the medicinal community, if nothing else, as well as the, the sports you. community Thank too. You. Nah. No, we have uh, excellent. I, I've sent uh, I've sent multiple bottles to people in hospitals and cancer patients, and very thankful. They're you know sitting in their hospital bed taking sprays, and uh, life isn't as bad. It's, it's going to be interesting. The new trend of uh, you know vape. We had the vape. We have puffing. We have grinding we have dabbing so now we're gonna have what we're we gonna call it spraying squirting what's the what's the new lingo gonna be getting getting your iota on i <laughs> 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 uh, mean no it missed, is a remarkable we'll, product we'll, like, be missed, we'll be missed in missed in there missed we go in, bro we got the mist yo <laughs> we're, we're, have to put, what's up with the mist? we're gonna have to put that on a shirt real soon do you miss bro uh, <laughs> I miss, bro. Well, well, you know what? We'll just have to probably let another rapper coin it because you know there. It seems like you know the rappers coined OG and and everything else in, in our industry. Let's let's let them. But they always right. come up with a cooler name. Well, another <laughs> another cool aspect of the product you is rapping about I know this. Right. <laughs> another cool aspect about the product is too is that you were mentioning earlier about white labeling, right? So like literally you could take anybody else's oil or product that they have, whether it's an isolate, a distillate, a uh, a whole spectrum product, right? Broad spectrum product and and and, and make a blend for them, right? Oh, absolutely. I want to start I actually want to start doing spray uh blue uh start playing with strain specific iodomists mm. where I'm using BHO. Hmm. And you're actually keeping the terpenes. And I know BHO is like taboo in some conversations, but I truly believe and seeing the tests from properly, you know, processed uh, BHO oil, you know, the amount of residual butane is less than what you lighter, lighter to your joint with. Um, 
So I don't believe that, you know, all BHO is harmful. And I believe in the medicinal value of it because it does have the, you know, full plant intact. And you can mm. actually, you know, the terpenes are still there and you're getting all the medicine. So I'd love to play with the BHO spray um, and, and, and make it strain specific. So it does taste like Bubba Kush or OG Kush. Mm without yeah. reinventing the flavor with you know other terpenes where you're just trying to get that right formula which most people are trying to do and right i've never i've never tasted a vape cartridge that said og kush that tasted like og kush never no we know the vape car car industry is is, is basically boiled down to now distillates that get blended with terps and it, it really isn't strain specific it really isn't anything no, no, you're just putting a name on it. This little cell. Right. Well, this is going to be great for the medical industry as well because now if, we, if, you, off, if you have the options of strain-specific uh, whole plant oils, right, or, or iodomists, right, uh, now we can really talk about how to directly impact somebody's headache or their, their pain Absolutely. or their menstrual cramps or, or whatever it is, yeah. right? Um, and Absolutely. then from there custom blends can happen to, to really to really dial in on a patient's I know, age, uh, right? And I know you have uh, I know you have Rick Simpson coming on next week, right? Yeah, he's, he'll yeah. actually two weeks. Uh, yeah, two weeks. I know, I'd, I'd or Ed Rosenthal, sorry. Is Rick Simpson on? Did you say he was uh, coming on? No, we, we have Ed Rosenthal and Danny uh, Danko coming on with the uh, the cryocur guys in two weeks, which we haven't quite told everybody yet. But, yeah, we're going to have those guys on. <laughs> Simpson, okay. somebody we, we've been trying to get on for a while. Uh, oh, hopefully, gotcha. we'll be able to get him on soon. But like, well, you know, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk to him about doing a, you know, an RSI. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick Simpson, the iodomist. That would be and, also I mean, amazing. There's, there's – there's, Lots of lots of things I want to do, you know, mm. in, in the medical community and also in the rec community. Well, that's what's great about this product is you can bring it, pretty much put it anywhere, right? I mean, it, it applies to everybody. Ath the athletic community is what I'm really excited about because of the uh, just the way the world's turning right now. You know, you got the soccer leagues, you got the NHL, you got the uh, the baseball leagues, right? Like, you know, these are all viable options of, of sports that are, are willing to back up. We saw Robert Kraft of the Patriots even support uh, a CBD company now, uh, Rob, Rob Gronkowski CBD company, which they're trying to get, you know, involved in, in, in the NFL. And we're seeing the research, right? The research speaks for itself. And that's where the big thing comes in when people are getting really upset about cannabis or the stigmas of cannabis the research is there you know what i mean uh on a privately funded levels it's out there we're, we're realizing that this stuff works otherwise you know these franchises these these uh hospitals they wouldn't be turning to to their own research right in the long run absolutely so again, huge congratulations, guys! If you want to check it out, the website is up now. There's social media going, so you can go like and uh, follow the pages because, as like as you heard, there's a lot more coming. Um, you guys reach out with any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, Pablo's pretty, pretty. He's always working, but he's always responsive to at least us, I guess. You know. <laughs> I I am now. I, I was in social media uh, uh, hibernation minute. But uh, I'm out now, so I'll be paying attention and, and responding back like I used to. Well, the one thing I, I, we, I noticed is uh, the, this, this, this beard. Is this going to be the new look? Is this the, is you know, this I, the I new, never grew uh, a beard. Look? Never grew a beard in my life. Um, I figured since I was on lockdown, I'd give it a shot. And honestly, it was hell. For the first like <laughs> month, I was I wanted to shave it every day. It it hurt. It like was fighting me. It, it was actually I think having war on my face. But uh, I survived it. And now it doesn't <laughs> hurt anymore. And I kind of like it. I don't know. I might keep it even after the disease. <laughs> the COVID's over. <laughs> it's weird. It's definitely weird. <laughs> I, I'm wondering if when I do shave it, I'm going to look weird again. So I'll never get used to how I look. No, and, that, and that's as a, as a beard wearer. Yeah, that's a very, everything you said is true. <laughs> uh, Nobody will recognize yeah. you again. 
it's that yeah anyway i think it's covering my uh implant that's waiting to happen in three months so, <laughs> try cool. i got a weird if i'm smiling weird it's because i'm missing a tooth <laughs> cracked it and uh I'm, you got to wait like three months after the bone heals and all the drills and all this. I had my brain drilled into yesterday. Um, but yeah. So they're doing, they're doing dentistry now, right? Oh, man. I hate I, I just want to have all my teeth replaced. Not that I have bad teeth. I just don't want real teeth anymore. <laughs> I, I, want, I want indestructible. I literally, I cracked my tooth on a piece of freaking fried chicken. Right. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you break a tooth on fried chicken? Literally cracked it right down the center, all the way to the root. So they pulled it, they yanked it out, put a bone graft in, had to wait three months. And then I went back and they stuck a... a um, a post in there and literally drilled into my skull i could feel it in my skull it was such a weird feeling i never want that again i right. just want all my i want a brand new fresh set of teeth that are going to last me until i die and then <laughs> i don't have then i don't look like a bubba right now i look like a bubba i got a missing <laughs> tooth got fucking, all i need is i gotta put my redneck voice on Get my, get, my, get my redneck voice on and show my teeth. I'll be real good, brother. <laughs> so uh, I, I know I know we're gonna go to a segment here. I know you have to go really quick, but um, yeah, yeah, um, I gotta I gotta get out of California. Yeah, one quick one, one 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 last thing I want to ask you about, and this is gonna be something that I mean you, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Uh, did the riots, man? Okay, I don't answer. I mean, oh I mean, no, yeah, I'm not. Answering. I mean, you're on Cali. It's, it's a sore <laughs> subject. I mean, what, what advice you have for people? You know what I mean? Like, you, it is a tough subject. You know, yeah. I, I believe in the, I believe in the cause, uh, but I don't believe in the violence, and I also don't like how people feed off of it and monetize from it or shut down my roads because of it. It's, you know, it's, it's just. I don't know. A lot of fake people out there that that uh, will capitalize off of any any of the world's, uh, I guess, problems, mm -hmm. and, I, and that's the part I don't like. But yeah, uh, it definitely needs. Everybody needs to be aware of what's going on. You know, uh, living in Colorado for ten years, you know, we had one of the highest police brutality rates. Um, for a long time uh, i have a friend in colorado that sued the police twice um so uh you know they can't be given the power that you know they have to be put in check let me put it that way and i hope it all stops because you know right now is the wrong time to have this kind of shit happen when people are just sitting around driving themselves crazy looking for something to do mm -hmm. and this is something for them to do <laughs> so yeah, right. as a multiplied effect you know most of the people that would normally be like ah, i'm busy today or like yeah let's protest yeah i got nothing to do let's Just go protest. The house. right well i mean i think it's a good general statement yeah, that we, know, we've seen yeah well like i said uh, i i believe in the cause Things have to be done. I just want to see things done in the right way and people not take advantage of the situation and be, become opportunists. Right. I mean, there's no reason to loot, riot, and pillage your own stores, your own neighborhoods, your own cities. It only hurts your own community. Mm. Right. And now, right now yeah. we, get to, does nothing. we have to rebuild that. And like you said, it's a, it's a tough time right now and everybody's going nuts. Yeah. So hopefully... Tensions are high, man. <laughs> right. People are breaking. They need to. Tensions they need to be high. misted. Everybody needs to be misted they and relax, right? Gotta get misted. Get misted. <laughs> we need a song. Gotta get misted. <laughs> I can hear that. I can hear that going down right now, right? You know, yes, man. What's really funny is uh, Wash the other day had contacted me, and they're like, "Hey, man, we we're sitting around. We just had this crazy idea." Maybe we should write Bubba a track. So now I'm going to tell them they got to write us a mistrack. 
Get misted. Get Bubba misted. gonna get misted. Yo, <laughs> yo. Get Isn't there a Bob Marley song with the word mist in it? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I know yes, that's there is. is. Misty morning. <laughs> <laughs> I owe it a morning. Yes, yeah, there I owe we go. Morning. This, this, this work a riff off that, uh, that, that rhythm there. You know what I mean? Yes, um, yes. All right, Bubba. I know you gotta get to. Okay. I know you gotta get out of here. Uh, yeah, we man. appreciate your time for sure, brother. No, uh, no, good luck no, on everything you. that you have coming to you guys. Uh, again, thank guys. You, Much love to all you guys. Thank you for having me again. And uh, look forward to more and more shows as more and more stuff happens. Well, it's good seeing you out of hibernation, brother. And thank you again yes. for coming on. Here's, here's one more slogan. Full effect. Just missed it. Just missed, <laughs> Just missed it. it. There we go. It there sucks go. to swallow, baby. Yeah, it, it sucks, sucks to, to swallow. swallow. That one's still staying. <laughs> <laughs>
then we're gonna go ahead and just reach inside the package and just apply that liberally to the outer edges of the scuff area of the branch. From there, you're gonna to wanna to take a light soil, use a starter mix or pro mix, anything of the like that you would normally be using for cloning or for starting seeds. And you're just gonna go ahead and fill it in there nicely. Give it a good pack. Make sure that it uh, gets into all the different areas. You don't want any air pockets because then you're not gonna have uh, proper uh, stem growth in that area. And once you have a decent amount of soil packed in around all sides, we're just gonna go ahead and secure the top. Now, one of the reasons we like to use these uh, green twist ties is because in a couple of days, this soil is gonna dry out a little bit. And one of the benefits of using these ties over say zip ties is you're actually gonna be able to remove this uh, green tie, add a little bit of moisture to the inside of the bag, and then go ahead and tie it back up. You don't wanna move the bag around too much. You don't wanna move the soil around too much because then you're gonna run into issues with uh, root growth and potentially damaging any roots that are actually starting to grow. But for the most part, it's relatively easy and you're gonna to start to see root growth in about seven to 10 days uh, in most cases. Uh, sometimes it takes up to two or three weeks depending on the strain uh, in your environment. But in most cases, you're gonna see some fairly fast uh, clone growth. Thanks for tuning into Grower's Guide. You should now have a general understanding of airline cloning. In about two or three weeks, we're going to come back here and we're going to give you another video to show you how this clone ended up turning out. So make sure you tune back into one of our future episodes. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions or concerns regarding this video or would like to reach out to Vermont Grow Coaching for a consultation, please reach out to us at 802-342-5381. You can also reach us at vermontgrowcoach.com or find us on Facebook and Instagram under Vermont Grow Coaching. Thanks again and have a great day. this i guess this is now pretty much bit the dust um and branding is probably going to just evaporate and we're live yeah. again yeah yeah all right yeah, guys so we are we are back right now uh huge thanks to matt bubba kush uh from the bubba kush brand for coming on spending some time with us today uh a lot of great things going on over there again if you guys want to check him out he's all over social media he's not a hard guy to find so go check him out on social media uh we are back now uh thomas markholm of vermont grow coaching thank you again for another great episode uh and another great growers guy tip for the week um yeah, and then we also catch my have safety scissors <laughs> well man it, it's a very it's very important to have these these uh these segments because people really don't know and every day you know and if you do think you know there may be another way that may work a little bit better or you may not ever thought about or you know if you're an open-minded person you can try uh so it's a very important segment we love having you on and uh we know you're kind of hung up in a physical note so we love having you hobble around and do the best that you can and uh and pull it off that so nobody can see it so that's that's a great thing uh we also have timothy fair from vermont campus solutions on with us uh hi timothy how are we doing today um great job. <laughs> uh i want to say congratulations to you first and foremost again for your your luncheon right we you, you've been able to relaunch uh this program that you've been doing which is great uh, tell tell the listeners a little bit more about what you what you guys are doing well we uh started this about last year i don't know we probably <laughs> almost two years now, uh, started our break, brown bag lunch every Wednesday, first Wednesday of the month from 12 to 2, uh, open, free. We provide food. We provide the space. Let everybody come together. Um, Sometimes, you know, we had a speaker series going on for a while, but obviously with COVID, we had our March one and then had to stop. So today, July 1st, we were able to uh, bring it back. Uh, it was an outdoor setting under a tent at the Zen Barn in Waterbury. Beautiful, beautiful venue. Uh, nice centrally located, got about 15, 16 people, did an outdoor barbecue, burgers, hot dogs, Zen Barn gave us a great price on it. We had a couple sponsors, uh, Burn Gallery and uh, Call Truck Cannabis both uh, pitched in to help out. So it was a really a lot of fun. And it was good to see that uh, people were willing to come out, you know, mask, social distance, the whole nine yards. But it uh, was a pretty successful event. We're excited about uh, continuing now. We'll be planning on doing another one for uh, August and uh, keep going as long as uh, the weather lets us. Nice, nice. I That's look forward to, to being there to speak at that event in August. So you're, the day you show up, you're on, man. Bro, but, uh, on, you don't worry. Invite. Permanent invite, Brandon. There's a little birdie out there that says pretty soon <laughs> I will be going everywhere. <laughs> Probably a good time oh, to take a trip from Arizona to Vermont right now, just saying. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. hey. hey.
you know. I hear heat, I hear COVID, I hear all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I hear, <laughs> you know, I hear a lot of that too. I don't see it, but I mean, I hear it. That's what all I'm... All you have to do is get misted. That's right. You just got to get misted. <laughs> Should be a commercial, Joe, really. No here. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, Don't maybe you, you know what, Joe? Maybe we should have Hot Rock write us a track for Get Mested. There you go. We definitely should. Uh, we have we have tons of people in the music industry that we all know, and love, and care deeply for. And that being said, anybody who wants to make us a track, please submit. Should a track. we make it a competition? To, uh, Joe Bob, uh, we could, or why not? Why can't we have multiples? Right? Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we should start a contest. We'll be like, hey. Write the signature track for Iota Miss right. Get Misted. Like, and perform it and perform it live at our launch party in California yeah. with like Snoop and, and yeah. Cypress Hill that we didn't we also didn't discuss really much today. Um <laughs> so anyways, back to back to uh the news here a little bit and back to Tim. Um so what did Tom lot- say? <laughs> what happened to Tom? Tom Tom already went, he went live. Yeah, he, I'm he's... I'm good. I, I had a six-minute segment. I just sat here and and smoked the blunt while. The yeah, other man, his it. work is done. He put his wow, time in it's, today. It's all you, Tim. I'm just gonna sit here and relax now, man. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for you. We have you and our horses, right? Um, well, off air, we talked really quick uh, about some of the biggest news in cannabis right now: uh, the acreage holdings deal, right? So we announced it about a month ago in April. Acreage holdings. Um, basically had a a deal to acquire canopy right um or canopy was a, to acquire acreage sorry about that guys i'll make sure everybody clarifies that um now yesterday right uh the, it looks like canopy dropped a bomb right um can you can you go into how this affects the industry because a lot of people seem to think that this is going to have a ripple effect through the industry uh, I mean, you know, it, it, it may, it may not. It has, you know, it's big names. Um, big names. Originally, it was a $3.4 billion deal. It was mm-hmm. going to be the priciest, the most expensive merger and acquisition transaction in the history of the cannabis industry, you know, um, but things change. Things change uh, a lot very quickly. COVID has seriously changed the uh, playing field. But the reality is the cannabis industry, when this merger was first introduced and first discussed, uh, capital was still flowing, valuations were high, uh, things were cruising along nice, and uh, you know that is not the case anymore. Uh, valuations mm-hmm. have crashed. Most companies are down significantly. Uh, we've seen you know all the major three players, Canopy kind of Growth, Aurora, and Aprio, all lose their CEOs uh, in the last six months. Uh, you know the prices, stock prices are nowhere near where they were. Uh, mm-hmm. Canopy still has a nice high stock price thanks to Constellation Brands, who's a multi-billion-dollar you know conglomerate that has a big chunk of them. Thank you. Uh, that's what's keeping their valuation high. But you can't, and one of the contingencies on this m a was never going to happen until the United States legalized. Um, because obviously you can't have, you know, it's still- Thank legal. you for saying that. Yeah, I, that was one of the triggers uh, for this. So it never was going to happen the way it was originally written. But Joe, um, do you remember? We talked about this almost, well, it was like a year and a half ago, okay? Mm-hmm. And it was the $3.2 billion deal for the federal legalization of cannabis, right? And all the senators and everybody was jumping on it, whatever. Everybody forgot about all of this, okay? No, I don't. Obviously, I don't know the inside story because I'm not there, all right? But obviously, clearly, something happened, and then companies spent way too much money, and then the whole thing just became a whole, like, it just felt like playing on the couch. Like, Uh done. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, the things have changed. Acreage, they they lost their CEO, too. Kevin uh, Murphy, I think his name was. Uh, He's out. (laughs) <laughs> Most of these CEOs right. stepped down. In the yeah, last, you know, so it, this has happened straight across the board. I mean, mm-hmm. I had this MedMen, Acreage, uh, everyone, everyone, you know, it's a different, it's a really difficult time. Uh, and Acreage was worth a lot more at the mm-hmm. time. Uh, when, you know, mm-hmm. so they have their valuation <laughs> dropped. So obviously, kind of is not going to pay what they were going to pay. Uh, and uh, the, you know, elephant in the room, all contingent on federal legalization in the United States. Right. Mm-hmm. Not something was going to be happening at any time soon. So, you know, does it have an impact? I, I mean, sure. It, it acknowledges the realities that, of, that maybe some people don't want to acknowledge is that we, the cannabis, the cannabis industry is in a tough spot right now. 
Uh, there's not a lot of money. There's not I a mean, lot of capital. There's not a lot of investment. Acreage just took a fifteen million dollar loan at. Anybody want to guess the interest? Sixty. Right? Yeah, I saw it. Sixty percent. Sixty percent interest on fifteen mil. I, I mean, I and not only that, it, though, right? But, but they're that's they're insane. good. But their that, time that, that, to that, return that, the payment is ridiculous, right? It's only like a few months, isn't it? Um, yeah, but it just, I mean, that's the numbers that we're looking at. Um, are they going to default? Probably. What happened? It's exactly what happened. I am this. Although now we found out that a lot of that, which you know, blew my mind. I never understood I this until I just read about uh, the fact that they were subject of a DOJ investigation last year, the merger of MTX and I this was subject to what they call a second request which is the equivalent of a federal subpoena for documents, they were forced to produce thousands, hundreds of thousands, or possibly millions of total of documents, emails, files, papers, records. Um, and they had a, 60 lawyers they had to employ, uh, 60 like out, lawyer hours. It, mm. it was a shitload of money, a shitload of time in order to comply with what now we see was a personal vendetta of the attorney general. Uh, an investigation that was not based on any illegality or even a whiff of impropriety, based mm -hmm. solely on the personal beliefs and the personal vendetta of our Attorney General Bill Barr. Uh, and now at well, least that's come out. At least there's at least I understand now what happened because it didn't make any sense before. Now, well, now you bring that up. I mean, that 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 leads us into the next question. Um, not to cut you off from answering that question, but no. we're going to talk about Barr in a minute. Um, <laughs> there's, lot, there's lots of things going on like you said up until a day ago you didn't realize that these certain things were issues right um and now you know yesterday we see that you know Barr is you know being accused of abuse of power um going mm, after people no. well, <laughs> well, i mean it's not only and, but but the unique thing about this is it's not only the, just the campus industry it's the automotive and technology technology industry as well right um, so, you know, Tim touched on it here, um, and just explain, Tim, what, what, how you understand what is coming out right now about uh, Attorney Barr and his associations, and now, there, you know, there's dozens of uh, members calling for a resolution yesterday, right? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, they want to, you know, listen, we all know what Bill Barr is. Bill Barr has been Trump's lapdog since day number one. Stop. Um, yeah, had Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions was was the biggest lapdog you can imagine. But still not quite enough, you know. Didn't really enough for him. Uh, got rid of him and hired Bill Barr on with the precondition at the beginning of the relationship that you will be my bitch. Uh, there was never a question about it. There was never any. <laughs> and every single decision that's been made since he took uh, the post of Attorney General has been nothing but collusion with the White House. It's not. People think that's what's supposed to be. It's not. The judiciary is supposed to be independent. The DOJ is supposed to be an independent body. It's not supposed to be the president's lapdog to go after his own person. So that, you know, that's fundamentally the problem. Now, when we want to talk about specifics and this issue with the cannabis industry and how it's affected our industry, that now is a prime example of somebody in a position of power using that power, not in an appropriate way, not in the way the power is meant to be used, but using it to further a personal vendetta. Mm -hmm. I don't like pot, so I am going to use the powers of my office to go after it. Whereas mm -hmm. the what you're supposed to do is say, I am the top law enforcement agent of this country, and I will go where the crimes are. Um, right. You know, I will go where there is indication of illegal activity. Um, there was no indication. This wasn't the DOJ going after illegal growers or going after shady operations or tax cheats in the industry. They weren't going after unlicensed dispensaries. No, they were going after legitimate, publicly traded, transparent, legal companies. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I don't like it. Right. Uh, and that's a real mm -hmm. problem. And that's a real problem. Take, you know, you, you could, you, you know, any industry, it's cannabis happened to be it, could be liquor, could be tobacco, could be whatever industry he doesn't like. You know, mm -hmm. he got a real problem with like, an automobile, so he's going to go after the automobile industry. The point is, the power, the post of attorney general is not there to serve their personal vendettas. It's to serve the country. It's to mm -hmm. serve the best interest of the country. And when you have your lawyers and your investigators and your, you know, uh, M&A department going after, the, you know, just causing a ridiculous amount of heartache for cannabis companies, it, not only are you screwing them on properly, you're also letting the real criminals get away. Because you're wasting mm -hmm. your resources going after your own personal things. You don't like the industry. 
um, when the real crooks whoop, doo, 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 walking around. <laughs> um, and that, right. again, that's another problem. So what's We've happened seen- is, you know, there have been now articles of impeachment issued by the House. Yeah. You know, is there really, you know, I mean, it's just a waste of time. It's yeah, it's, it's been a waste of time. what happens already. Yeah, exactly. You know, nobody cares about the facts or the truth or whether or not he's actually doing this. It's your Democrat or your Republican. That's it. It's only right. two choices we have. Gee. You see, well, it seems like he's it seems like put against each other to fight. Imagine that. I wonder who's. Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, there, there seems to be over thirty plus supporters of this impeachment. Now, does that mark a a positive thing for our industry? Being that, obviously, if people were on his side, they would and, and feel the same way that he would. They wouldn't be looking to impeach him, right? I mean, is this Again, more of a, a cannabis question, about... or is this a law issue? It's not about cannabis. It's yeah. not, no, you know, most of the people who are, you know, arguing for impeachment aren't like, oh, he's, he screwed the cannabis industry. No, it's the fact that he used the post for a personal vendetta, mm-hmm. not about the subject of the vendetta. They can care less about cannabis. They wanted to do something real about cannabis. We passed the federal legislation. Now, mm-hmm. it's just an opportunity to play political points because he happened, he fucked up again in a very clear way. And we have some members of the DOJ whistleblowers who come out <laughs> and like said, hey, I'm a career DOJ lawyer and this is not right. Um, but it has nothing to do with cannabis. has everything to do with him and the personal vendetta component. That was what would be impeachable. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure a lot of these people wish it was something different. I would, you know, that it wasn't cannabis because that in and of itself, they can always say, oh, it's uh, cannabis. It's federally illegal. That's why we were looking at it. When everyone knows that's bullshit. Um, <laughs> you know, so I'm sure they wish it was, you know, coffee industry or, you know, the soft drink industry or something, something that has more social acceptance than cannabis. Um, mm-hmm. But lo and behold, that's what they got. And it is. It's illegal what he did. Um, and it's impeachable. And he should not be the attorney general of this country. Um, not, no question about it. Before this even happened, you know, right when he fired the uh, prosecutor in the Southern District of New York, that should have been mm-hmm. He should have been out right there. Uh, mm-hmm. But we live, uh, we live in very strange times. We live right. in very strange Simple casualties. I mean, I mean, you brought up a couple of good points oh, that people may not realize. But I mean, there, I mean, there's articles even as of yesterday about the, you know the borders where the patrol agents are just arresting and, and confiscating perfectly legal products, uh, no, didn't products with paperwork, about. products with you know what I mean, and they're still confiscating it and putting people through that ringer. Um, and as we all know, that ringer can be very expensive. It can be very time consuming and typically it involves a loss of product or quality of product because they just confiscate it. Right. Um, hold on to it. Now, one of these other questions I want to talk to you about, because we, we are talking about the government a lot in this little segment here. Um, last week, we had shown the, the, the fact that the military, right, our military is investing twenty seven million dollars into psychedelics um, or psychedelic inspired drugs, as, as if you want to put it politically correct right um now we we, we were we we're talking about why won't they do this with cannabis why well you know what's the cannabis issue you know how how is the government military establishment get away with being able to work on these drugs where our scientists can't right um now uh in two days ago it was reported that there's a bunch of bipartisan senators that, that filed a uh, a cannabis and cbd research amendment to the, the, the defense spending bill is 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 this how it's gonna? The, the, do you think the the first flow of legalization goes is going to be through defense bill uh, research and and funding? No, no, just a way to get you know some relatively non controversial research and some CBD and provisions through, and yeah. we don't even know if it'll attach. Um, you know, I think cannabis is not going to be legalized for the military. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. not going to happen. But what you're talking about with the psychedelics is mind blowing. I mean, that is fascinating how fast the FDA is regulating and approving psychedelics uh, (laughs) faster than they are CBD. (laughs) It literally came out of nowhere. But, you know, the reason for this is because they have shown ketamine, MDMA, psilocybin have had unbelievable clinical and demonstrative effects. Uh, They ran these double blind studies. They ran peer reviewed research and it is indisputable that mm-hmm. in certain doses, these substances can really help depression and PTSD. One of the mm-hmm. major, major challenges in the military is these guys, these fucking broke kids are coming back. I was so fucked up in the head. I mean, how can you not? I mean, mm-hmm. You're watching your buddies get blown up. You're, you're being shot at by right. your kids. You're, you're fucking shooting other human beings. That's not anything any of us are supposed to be doing in a normal day. That's gonna screw mm-hmm. your head up. 
And these poor guys, they go over, they, you know, they give everything, they come back, they screwed up in the head, they have hard times getting jobs, they have a hard time readapting, uh, and they found some tremendous success. Uh, Kennedy, I, who knew? This <laughs> is it, it not meant for human consumption, uh, but very small doses um, in the right you know, the therapeutic way, it, it, they've shown unbelievable decreases in depression and PTSD, MDMA as well. Um, so it, it, it's incredible why the stigma has not attached to the psychedelics as much as it has cannabis. Um, right. Frankly, cannabis is a much more mild and dark skin, uh, much less chance of adverse reaction. Uh, I, I mean, it's a much safer substance it's a much you know less you know i christ and don't do a bunch of okay. case, see what happens well they, they answered that the, the answer is easy the, it's the war on drugs so cannabis was the poster child Target. of the war on yep. drugs mushrooms really were the poster You're, child of war on drugs yeah you know little so. strips of mario shaped acid wasn't the poster child it was cannabis so that's why the stigma still lies there because we have so many people that are still following that same mindset that was set forth so many years ago mm. well i mean if you think about it too let's like, let's go back to the 90s we're all we're all this of age right so in the 90s these drugs were fairly easy to find they were all of our party drugs at the time most of them weren't really quite illegal like they were coming on illegal people realizing what they were but we, we enjoyed them we had fun with them right most of us people kind of like cannabis right uh, but even back then Cannabis at that point in time was the target, right? It was mainly your, the war on drugs was cannabis. Like nobody even talked about opioids or any of these other dangerous drugs. Uh, alcohol was always something that has been supportive. But, you know, then we talk about alcohol prohibition. When alcohol prohibition was lifted, now alcohol is, is, is generally consumed as anything on this planet, right? Um, and it's okay to have even on Sundays now in, in most states because, you know, in God's day, you know? Um, but, you know, Tim raises a great point, and like literally, the the whole uh, the the psychosilibin market has kind of snuck up behind cannabis legalization, right? Because in Colorado, right now, it's legal in Colorado. You know what I mean? Um, and, and you know, we we think of Colorado as being a weed leader, right? Cannabis leader in all aspects. Now here we go doing the 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 mushrooms. I know people that have been microdosing, right? Because if you do microdosing properly, it has been proven extremely effective. And these people are just like you said, they're, 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 they're dropping off all these other sorts of drugs, even smoking cannabis, right? Um, to the point where they're just microdosing every day. They use a little bit of uh, uh, mushrooms, you know, a little bit of uh, a cannabis oil, and they're perfectly happy. Um, and they're managing their lives much better. They're much happier people. And they're realizing that that effect in their life is, is, has been really beneficial to them. Um, but like Tim said, who thought right who's even talking about it like it really it's it's not there, you know there's a huge cannabis push there's there's normal there's people that have been been activists for years and it's like wait i can go buy mushrooms in colorado now no you can't happen? buy mushrooms in colorado hold on hold on hold on <laughs> denver decriminalized magic mushrooms so the police in denver will only ticket you they are still illegal. They are still illegal statewide. The state police will still arrest you, and you cannot buy them. So right, just well, let's, let's just get her. You can buy them in Amsterdam. Him. That's mind blowing. You can buy them in Amsterdam. You walk right into what they call a smart shop there. They have all sorts of mushrooms for sale. Mm. Yeah, but you can't. <laughs> just, just, uh, I, mean, yeah. I mean, well, that's a general conception, right? So that thank you for clearing that up for us, because I mean, as we look at from the outside, Oregon is that state, right? And now we are seeing a lot more uh, bills with this class of of, of mushrooms, uh, MDMA's uh, treatments that we that are not even associated with the the cannabis class right now being presented into to be state laws and, and to be regulated and, and to, to create a market therefore of right. Um, it's just like I said, it's amazing to see the military be back in this. And my question is, why can't we be back in cannabis, right? It would show the effect that cannabis has on PTSD as well. Uh, mm. You would think, yeah, you would think they would be all over it. Um, but it's not. And again, I think Tom hit the nail on the head there. It's just, it's supposed to be the chosen child of the war on drugs. There have been so many, so much money spent in eradication and destruction and law enforcement and lives ruined. That to backtrack at this point, we're not, we'd be acknowledging that all of we that was wrong all of that was really wrong uh and i don't think that our institutions are ready for that 
I don't think law enforcement is ready for that. I don't think uh, prosecutors are ready for that. I don't think the Department of Justice is ready for that. I was just in federal court on Friday in a sentencing in a pretty big case here in uh, Burlington with, uh, you know, cannabis and selling cannabis. Uh, And I had to listen to a federal judge for an hour to go on on about how dangerous marijuana is to the community. Um, You know, she acknowledges, well, it's not heroin, but, you know, it's not fentanyl, but, but this is just as dangerous and people using this to get away from their problems are more likely to start using more dangerous things. And this is, and this is from a federal judge. This is about an incredibly powerful chief judge for the district of Vermont. And she's a very intelligent woman. But to hear this, and you can't say it, you can't argue it. You're in federal court. Cannabis is mm-hmm. a federal controlled substance. So you have to go, yes, your honor. Yes, we, we acknowledge how dangerous the substance is. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it, it's just insane. It's just insane. Then I go back to my office and I help people develop the cannabis companies. You know, and it's just it, 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 this this disconnect is is crazy. Uh, but you know, it's good for me because I almost forget sometimes how serious the federal government still takes this. And you know, getting into federal court, listen to the judge for a little bit. You know, just lambast and almost put my client in jail for a simple THC positive test. It, it, they take it to pretty serious still, and that's uh, that's scary. Until we have full legalization, you know, uh, hey, uh, it's anybody going to jail for this? Anybody spends one minute incarcerated uh, over marijuana, uh, over cannabis? Or it's just, it's just, it, it, you can't even wrap your head around it. You know? Well, earlier before the show, we were talking about, and you mentioned, you just mentioned finding uh, testing with with THC in the blood, right? Uh, we we're, were talking about rulings and and testings and things like that, and how they stand within each state. Uh, the, the article we were talking about was a few years old, but you were bringing up it's a good point, right? It's still something we need to discuss because you just brought it up in a federal level again, right? Well, this would more imp- impact state level. Um, yeah. This is more of a DUI driving under the influence, uh, you know, issue. Uh, with, you know, blood tests and saliva tests we've heard a lot about here in Vermont. Um, mm-hmm. And just basically, you know, any sort of testing for roadside impairment, you know, roadside testing for impairment. Um, and thankfully, thankfully, a, a lot of states, not all, um, you know, there are a handful of states that have uh, adopted a, uh, just per se, any trace amounts of cannabis in your system uh, is indication of impairment, which is insane. We all know how long uh, THC can remain in the body. Uh, mm-hmm. Up to 30 days, it's fat soluble. Maintain, you know, depending on how much you smoke and how many of your body fat, and all of the, you know, so many different factors. Uh, but most states now are acknowledging, uh, and what we're, t- we're talking about there is a great case in Arizona, where the Supreme Court said that a blood test showing eight nanograms of THC in the blood is not admissible. You can't use that to prove impairment. You, uh, you know, uh, at the very least, you would need an expert witness to be able to explain what that means. You know, mm-hmm. we as a society have uh, come to understand BAC for alcohol. If you're a 0.1 or over, you're probably shit faced. If you're on a 0.1, you're all right. Some states have the 0.08, you know. Um, and we all know that. We all understand that. We all know that, uh, you know, if you are over a 0.1 uh, blood alcohol content, you're probably going to be a little drunk. If you're a 0.2, you're probably falling unconscious. If you're 0.3, you're dead. Um, you know, we've all grasped that. We all get that. It's not exactly right. Uh, right. It does vary between people to people, but we've accepted that, you know, from DUI prosecution. There is no answer for that. What's three nanograms in your blood? What's five? What's 12? Oh. What's 12 to Brandon? What's six to me? What's eight to you? What's two to him? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, how does that relate to current state of impairment? It doesn't at all. Uh, so what we are seeing is that... Uh, so most states are actually getting this one right. Uh, their fence attorneys are challenging it. Uh, you know, law enforcement is lost. They're on the stand going, oh, CPHC, it must be over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no idea. Um, and when you really put the irons to them, like in a DUI trial prosecution, you really say, well, okay, well, how does that show impairment? How impaired is he? How about if he was this? How about if it was that? How long is the elimination? You get the cop. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Uh, and they lose it and you get your acquittal which is great. Um, so, you know, it is important, not all states. There are still states that have established per se limits of five nanograms. What does that mean? There are states and Canada has a zero times. Now they're not really prosecuting that thankfully, um, but that's how the law is written. Any mm-hmm. amount to be constituted as uh, impairment, um, mm-hmm. which that was a reaction of their nationwide legalization. But the, in reality, it's not an issue because people don't, there's no, you know, uh, 
mass amounts of casualties coming from uh, stone driving. You're not seeing deaths. Right. You're not seeing kids die. You're not seeing people die all over the roadways. You're not seeing fatal accidents increase. You're not seeing any of it uh, because it doesn't happen. Because right. people who hot don't drive when they're too hot to drive. Right. <laughs> it, don't, it does not impair your judgment the way alcohol impairs your judgment. No. And the people, you know, when you do drive stone, you're not speeding down the road. You're not taking turns at 90 miles an hour. You're not, you know, running red lights. You're driving very carefully, very slowly. You know, and every unbiased, actual peer reviewed scientific study of this have showed minimal, no to just absolutely minimal increase in low speed collisions, mm -hmm. no correlation to fatal accidents. Um, straight across the board, every single one. The only time you'll see a study that shows, you know, increased accidents and deaths, it's funded by. Sam, Smart Purchase yep. Marijuana, or the Rocky Mountain High Intensity Drug Task Force, or, or you know, the National Institute for Drug Abuse. You know, it, it's all of these incredibly biased studies. Mm. Uh, when you look at the University of Arizona study, you look at the University of Minnesota study, the National Highway Safety Review study, the uh, National Highway Insurance fucking uh, study, for Christ's sake, uh, where they really wanted to know the truth so they could set their uh, insurance rates and be able to adjust accordingly, they showed minimal, if the, you know, zero, zero to maybe a 5% increase in low speed mm -hmm. or low speed accidents, uh, based on like, you know, 9,000% increase for a blood alcohol content of over 0.1. Um, it's just not the same thing. So as you see less accidents, as you see not an issue, as people aren't dying, I think the whole kind of driving under the influence of marijuana is just going to go away because it's not a big deal. It's mm -hmm. just not that big of a deal. It's not alcohol. It's not heroin. You're not falling asleep at traffic lights. You know, you're not getting on the I-89 driving the wrong way in the wrong fucking direction. Uh, it's just again, it doesn't happen. It's not a concern, and I'm hoping that we'll see this become a non-issue sooner rather than later. I think it's already becoming a non-issue. You know, right. every time we have a legalization step whether it was decriminalization, whether it was medical program, whether it was legalization in 2018, every single time the prohibitions have screamed about what's going to happen to the roads and what's going to happen to the drive. Mm -hmm. And time and time and time again, we have simply seen nothing. We have seen nothing. Right. We've seen, you know, uh, everything. So, uh, and, yeah. and I know, I mean, <clears throat> sadly, though, we still have these states that are using that as their their last leg against legalization, right? I mean, we've seen it here in Vermont. We've seen it in other states where it's they, they're hanging up on this, this this driving under the intoxication mentality idea that people have. Um, as we all know, it's been going on for years. It's been a million-dollar business for years. So over the course of time, we still see there is – a, a larger number of alcohol related driving under the influences. We don't really hear about cannabis that much. It's usually heroin or alcohol. You know, you get these guys falling asleep at the, in the wheels of the cars at stoplights under heroin right now, which is even the craziest thing to me. Um, and just driving through people's houses because they passed out. You know what I mean? Um, and we're not seeing, we've, and we've never really seen much. If you look back in the history over the last, you know, few years where they've, they've tracked these, these arrests where cannabis is the, the, the issue, you know what I mean? Well, you know, because people who drive in cannabis don't generally do things that are going to get them pulled over. Right. <laughs> why do people, why do drunk drivers get busted? Because they're driving like shit. We do, right. you know, the cop still needs reasonable suspicion to pull you over, probably because in some places reasonable suspicion and others, most of them, to the lower mm -hmm. level. Uh, but they still got to see you do something wrong. It can't just be, oh, he left the dispensary, I'm going to pull him over. I mean, does it happen? Mm -hmm. Of course it does. But <laughs> they're supposed to, for the most part, most cops realize that they do make a stop like that, a good lawyer will get it thrown out. They need mm -hmm. to see you do something wrong. Uh, when, mm -hmm. when people are drunk, they do shit wrong all the time. When they're too high yep. to drive, they do shit wrong all the time. Most people smoking pot and driving aren't doing things <laughs> wrong. <laughs> uh, so that's why there's less interactions. There's less getting pulled over. Most of the time you hear about, oh, there was an accident or she got pulled over. We found marijuana in her system. Great. Did you smoke that day? Was it a week ago? They don't mention the quarter Jack Daniels she drank. They don't mention the fentanyl they just sniffed right. or the oxys they just popped. You know, it's, <laughs> again, it, it's just this focus on trying to do anything you can to demonstrate how dangerous marijuana really is. Well, I mean, we've seen that. We've seen that in the news. We've seen it even here so in Vermont good. where we had, uh, 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 you know, people driving down the wrong way, getting in accidents, killing people, and they're all messed up on everything that you could think of, all the concoctions, right? And then the headline is cannabis, right? Even uh, over uh, horrific, the, horrific, yeah, or the yeah, heroin. Yeah. 
talking about that's so, yeah that really really horrific accident yes that, uh the uh defended um a drunk uh pain pills uh mental health issues uh I highly intoxicated. I, I i don't know if there was actual heroin or it was just like prescription medications There's prescription, oh we yeah. found some thc in his blood and what is the headline read and this was even a person that had reached out for help that same day before he made a mental decision or or to to you know put himself in a position where he he, he took some lives and unfortunately yeah. that was the headline like you said and we've seen that all over the country you know what i mean because you know and, and and is that is that the the stigma against marijuana because another issue we could bring up especially in vermont and i don't know how this is across all these other states but you know, if, if you're and I hate to put it this way, right, because like so if I go rob the store in my town right now by knife point and I tell them I'm a heroin addict, I'll go to two weeks of counseling and be let off and I'll be OK. Right. That's not true. Dude. That's a fallacy. If well, you walk into a store with a knife and thought you're going to be charged with aggravated assault and you're going to go to jail. Well, um, we've seen it mean, and, I, it, and, and, and we've seen it here. We've had, we, I've seen it here. We've, we've had this issue here in, in my own town, actually. You know what I mean? And this is why I laugh, because it's like we've seen Matri, and, and maybe the situation is not a good paranormal. As but, a criminal attorney, every criminal case is different. I, I just get that. Right, I just, right. I, mean, I see. Oh, we, 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 more than likely, we, we see these I, people I, that are. I think you threaten somebody in their store, you're going to jail for 10 years. Maybe if you're white, you get the cover you have. And uh, maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, and, and then that brings us to the next thing of the racism, which we're going to touch base on in cannabis, because I think it's a, it's a subject that nobody wants to talk about, but I think it's a subject that we all feel like we should discuss. Um, and then we should educate a few people on our platform here anyways. But I feel like in, in, in a lot of these states, especially in, in a Vermont state where they, you know, we have injection sites, we, we are, they, we have places where sites we've talked about it, but it's never been a right. no safe injection sites. in Vermont. So, but we, need, but we, we, we are very, my point is like the the focus of our state seems to be very supportive of the opioid crisis, right? But right now we're struggling to get the cannabis side through, right? Is there Chittenden County I, I, again? You know, like I think Chittenden County and Burlington, there mm -hmm. is more so of a progressive mindset in harm reduction. Um, mm -hmm. Let's try to have needle exchange programs. Let's try not to have people overdose and die. Let's get Narcan out there. Let's understand we can't arrest this away it needs to be dealt with with treatment and in the meantime let's try to keep people from dying and getting sick and infecting others it's a harm reduction model that's been adopted in chittenden county uh, mm -hmm. rutland bennington brattleboro no, uh, they're just still the same old let's let's arrest them and lock them all off um mm -hmm. which is why you've seen fatal overdoses drop by you know half in chittenden county in the last two years mm -hmm. while the rest of the state hasn't um you know but it, it's it, again Marijuana is just one of those things that people are just, you know, and you said, you know, earlier with the whole, uh, that horrific accident, one of the reasons was because we're still in that, we were right in the process of legalization. Right. Uh, and there is still a strong contingent of people. It just, they just had this mindset that they will never, ever get behind cannabis legalization. It will always be a demon, uh, a devil's lettuce, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just been demonized for so long. It, it, it is incredibly frustrating. Because it's, yeah. the, the arguments are not based in logic. They're not based in reality. They're not based in science. They are, uh, you know, George Merkel, police chief from Virginia. I will set it best at a debate. I was debating him at uh, Vermont Law School as on a panel. Uh, and we're, you know, kind of a pro and con on cannabis legalization. And he mm -hmm. gets up and stands up full freaking uniform of battle gear and pounds the table and says, I don't care what science says. I've been a police chief of a small Vermont town for 25 years. And I will tell you, marijuana can kill. I, I, I know it with my heart. You know, and it's, 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 it's a big, tall, screaming, freaking out fucking police officer. And people listen to that. And people hear that. Mm. But it's not real. It's all theater. It, it, mm. it's, it's, it's not killing anybody. It's not dangerous. It's not hurting anybody. Uh, you know, and, but it, it, what do you do? How do you argue against an emotional reaction? And how do you debate somebody who says, I don't care what science says. I don't care what the facts say. I know what my heart, what I've seen. How do you right. do that? You can't. Yeah. 
Because I mean, I mean, usually you say science, but here somebody obviously is. I mean, and this is a weird thing about what we see in in this country because everybody's so science based, and it, it seems like we have that fun divide where it becomes a religious or science based issues, right? Because everyone's like, "Well, my yeah, heart one's religion real, one's doesn't positive. allow me to believe science this." Science is right? real, and that, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, how people can like turn away and be anti science, anti facts, yeah. anti truth, uh, because it doesn't fit my particular worldview. I, it just, it, it, but that's what's happening with cannabis. You know, you can tell them the facts. You can show them the peer review studies. You can show them over and over and over, and it doesn't matter because people don't care about science. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about facts. They care about whatever grouping they've decided to fit themselves into and that thought pattern. And that's what I have to believe. It, it's happened with politics. It's happened with everything. It, it, you know, COVID, mask wearing, for Christ's sake, um, and unfortunately, cannabis policy as well. And it's just, it, it just, I, I don't know what to do anymore. You know, well, I, I think. I, the- I, I- I lost a lot of heart when we uh, did not get a tax and regulated system this year, Vermont. I will. I, I, I'm, I'm there with you, man. Um, and we, we could talk about that all day long too. Um, the thing, the thing I think is unique about this industry right now, and, and, and we're seeing this in, in multiple levels. And maybe you know, we, we question: is it, is it, is it, the, is it the greed? The more we, less greed kind of mentality. Uh, is it the, the unique thing is that we're seeing is you know a lot of these politicians right there are jumping fences. Right. They're, they're claiming that they have somebody in their family that has been affected and been saved by cannabis. Right. So it, and this is where we get to that wrong part in our, in our industry is like, you know, we've had these guys fighting like we talk about with the cops fighting this industry, making this industry the number one priority who are now John Boner in the industry. Right. They're Boner and everything up. Right. Because they're just switching over and they're supporting these sides. Right. Um, now we bring up a great point of legalization. You know what I mean? We seem to see, and, and Bubba brought up earlier, you know, we, we have a huge number of support uh, on the federal legalization side of things. We see bills being added every day. We see them trying to work the military angles uh, of research now, which we hope, you know, I honestly, if they want, if they can get their hands on that, that grant, I support that. You know what I mean? Um, because to me, that would open up a VA that would open up doors for the VA. Right. In, in my opinion, and it should, because that, that's one of our, our medical industries that are suffering the most right now is the VA. And don't get me going there. And I'm sure that the, the people who are watching don't have a lot to say in that whole that whole aspect as well. But, you know, you brought up a great point earlier and I want to kind of end the show on it because we're getting closer to the show is the racism in cannabis. Right. We're talking about you know, the disproportionate arrest. We're talking about the social inequities that we've seen. We've talked about seeing people being locked up for ace of weed for longer than people that are molesting children and killing people on top of that as well. I think um, some cases on triple, you know, on three strict states where your third felony is life automatically, um, hmm. a ridiculously small amount of marijuana can constitute a felony for purposes of a three strikes law. Um, and that has been applied, not thankfully to a, insane uh, amount but more uh, hundreds of times uh, you know there are hundreds of cases of people serving life in jail uh for a three strike felony being the third felony simple marijuana possession yep. sometimes mm-hmm. there's some pretty horrific crimes before it uh, that were not that but that's irrelevant you know and that's what the, uh, the prohibition is well yeah but they got caught for blah 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 first and blah 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 second well great they got caught for blah 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 first and blah 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 second they served their time and they were done and now you're sending them to jail for life for possessing right. marijuana um, that's that's the relevant component of that. It's disgusting, and and almost every one to a T, black or brown. Right. And sadly, it's something we see and, and people are like, we don't see that. We don't see that. But then again, it's usually people that aren't black or brown. Right. Um, and then now we see these states that are trying to implement social equity changes. Um, is that harder? Is that is that as hard as it seems to, to be? Or is it can it be as easy as let's just let these guys out? Like, let's can we just open these doors up? And well, you know, social equity is multifaceted. You know, there's several components of it. First and foremost, it would be expungement, meaning you have any any sort of criminal record as a result of marijuana possession. That is gone. That is expunged. That has gotten rid of. That should. That's a no-brainer. That should automatically happen. Um, personally, I believe everybody who's incarcerated for possession of marijuana or having anything to do with marijuana should be released as well. Uh, mm-hmm. That is not generally uh, a component of social equity. Um, mm-hmm. The prevailing concept is well, it was illegal at the time they did it, so they're serving their punishment. Uh, you know, I, I we sure. appreciate <laughs> that as well. I don't think any. You know, but social equity generally, so expungement. Um, and then uh, yeah, allowing, you know, people who have been impacted by the war on drugs access to the industry. 
Um, yeah, you know, for the last five years, we've raided your house and shot your dogs and flashed bangs your, you know, grandmother and thrown tear gas in your kids' rooms and stormed your houses. Now mm. we've got a med men on the corner. <laughs> I, right. you know, I mean, that that whole just that, then that needs to be addressed and that needs to be dealt with. But as you know, I was at a convention last year at kind of this law clinic and somebody raised a really good point, which is all black and brown people don't want to sell weed. Maybe we don't want anything to do with the industry, but that doesn't mean that we haven't been affected and we shouldn't be able to reap some rewards. So, you know, Massachusetts was the first state to really try to implement social equity. It was a great concept. It was poorly executed. Um, there was no basis to go for. They, they instituted these social equity policies. And what happened is minorities were exploited. Uh, rich white men got a token black guy or a token Latino, uh, put them in a position, got their license, uh, you know, expedited, and then got rid of them. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was so blatantly atrocious what happened in a lot of regards uh, that that needed to be overhauled. Thankfully, Chicago now has kind of looked at that, what's worked, what hasn't, uh, you know, models where there are, you know, investments back into the communities that have suffered disproportionately as a result of the war on drugs, uh, communities that have been targeted, um, you know, so not just, okay, you can get a license to sell pot first, but maybe we, we rebuild your town community center or we rebuild a park or we, you know, a, a swimming pool or, you know, put something back into these communities that have been victimized. And that's mm. exactly what happens, victimized uh, for the last 40 years uh, as a result of the war on drugs. So it, it is, it's an incredible challenge, mm. uh, but it's incredibly important. Uh, and it's something that I think needs to constantly be implemented and revised and see mm. what works and see what doesn't, but it can't be given up on. And it can't just be throw your hands in the air. This is an issue that needs, and it's going to be ongoing. And it needs to be, these mm. conversations need to be had. They need to be had with communities that have been impacted. And they need to be, impact, you know, with the people who have been impacted. And it needs to be a collaborative effort to have the industry give back. You know, I believe right. that every kind of this company has a responsibility to educate the public. They also have a responsibility to, you know, make sure that those who have suffered uh, are at least, at least acknowledged and giving you know something back, uh, right? I mean, we, we're 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 seeing uh, a, a huge tidal wave of a divide coming into the campus industry over like the racism issues and things like that. Now, wouldn't the time be to take a step back with social equity? Um, and you raise a great point because there's a lot of uh, people of of and I will just say ethnic ethnic uh, out there that's all been impacted, not just black or browns, but you know Asians no, and, and everybody, right? Um, and now, wouldn't when, the time be the proper time right now, especially in this day and age, to, to, to look back at what we're, what we're educating our kids on, right? Um, we're realizing we're taking out statues right now. And now, do I agree with some of these statues being taken out? No, because I, I don't think we can, we can erase history. I don't want to erase the history. I want to be, I think as a country, we need to be accountable for what we've done as, uh, in, in our history and, and teach it properly like let's teach about Tulsa let's teach about these things where we where we where we as a generation has negatively impacted these black communities and then hopefully in the future not have these racism issues because there's going to be a general understanding of our histories right um, and then it's going to be truth histories right so we're not going to be segregating I mean in, in a weird way when we think about the time how long it's been since you know segregation and things like that you know we're, we're, we're talking how many years now right um so we've come a long way and we've seen a lot in the last few years but we have a long way to go um education is the one thing that we've seen not change in any of this right uh, we're still teaching the same things that we're, te we were that we were being taught back in the early 80s and i'm sure our parents are being taught back in their the 70s right um so the educational platform is is, is really where it has to come from because i mean if we're I don't know. For me, and everybody can disagree with me, and, and maybe this will piss people off, but I think racism is a is a taught thing. I don't believe that we are born with racism in our blood. We're all we're all people, right? We we and if you look at the way people sure. respond, we're all racist. Right. You don't come out racist. You don't come out doing this shit about what we have to learn. Those you know, right. we have to learn to think less of somebody because of the color mm -hmm. of their skin or what they believe or their religion. You know, it's as stupid as, you know, not liking somebody because of the color of their eyes or the color of their hair. It just happened to be skin that, you know, because right. of the geographical, you know, distribution and because of the horrific history uh, that we've out, you know, I mean, even, 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 well, even in financial levels, like you bring up a great point. You, you go to a school and no matter what color you are in the middle of school level, it's it's all oh, your shoes. We don't like your shoes today. You're not our friend. Oh, and all oh, you're wearing a cool shirt today. You're my friend now. You know what I mean? Like it, the, the weird ways we teach acceptance in our in our own personal lives is 
is is really quite unique and then like i understand i mean you know a lot of these people that are growing up don't have the proper parents to educate them on certain things um whether it becomes drugs or alcohol and then also their scorn parents that have been involved in some of these wars that go fuck this culture fuck that culture screw these people um or a lot you know lost a life or or been in a gang related industry where you know gangs were at the high point because of you know again we we, we could go back to racisms and and and, and politics and, and things that were implemented to to drive the the social social divides right um because when you get down to it when we look at prohibition and we look at cannabis a lot of people don't we talk about this all the time and i get people that ask me all the time and i get people that call the show and call me and say can you talk more about this and i think you know brandon i want to like let him go off for a little a few minutes because i mean we all have different views and aspects on 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 race uh, uh religions uh the way things go uh, we're all in different parts of the country we all have different backgrounds and cultures i believe you know we, we're on the same page here when we talk about it but like when we talk about racism and cannabis it's one of the, the leading reasons of prohibition right um between racism um between politics and powerful companies right and 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 literally a president that just sat there and got beat on to he implemented change and then we had another president come and decide to to create a war on drugs and really focused on you know cocaine and cannabis right um and then use the race cards again within this um to push all all these messages across right remember you know everybody knows anything about reefer madness it was you know the mexicans are coming they're going to take your girls they're going to take your women uh they're going to smoke this this hokey pokey stuff and and you know you're you know you all the women are going to flee to mexico right um so they <laughs> and then you know people but the sad thing is we're so influenced by media right and i think one of the coolest things about where we're at today finally for the first time in in that i can ever see or remember people are realizing how much bullshit we're fed right you turn on cnn it's so far one way that you're like what the fuck i can't even deal with this and you go to fox news and it's so far the other way you're like what the fuck where where's the middle where's the divide and it's very hard to find that middle and divide because everybody is reporting on you know we bring up covid right now right like how many news i, I could turn on news right now and find three news sources telling us that we are all going to die in two months and and we got to stay in lockdown and wear a mask and everything else and i could turn on other news sources that are telling us the completely opposite nothing's happening it's a hoax masks are going to kill you you know what i mean like go out and get some sun and enjoy your life like be cautious you know what i mean and then you you know it's just crazy now we're in a political time on top of it and and then we add the racism and, and unrest in our country and like everybody's saying we're all we're all home just getting fed media right and then what do we listen to how do you differentiate it's like the same thing with us how do you differentiate good and bad media there's there's so much pro media and cannabis that we don't even share because honestly it's just it's not even real you know what i mean um it's just propaganda material to try to get you to some place on maybes and and what ifs and and that's why we don't bring up a lot of the bills and stuff that you know are in the cannabis industry because literally the headline is this maybe what if uh these guys are talking about doing this and until we see things come to tuition especially in this industry we've realized that you know probably a good 90 percent of it never gets that far right um and then everybody's getting their hopes up i mean there's some good bills out there that we need to take a look at and, and figure out uh, but with the, the the police side of things um the the racism side of things these are things that are only going to be cured to me by education so the more people can get educated and look at things and then like we all have to realize you know the accountability has to happen but you know 90 percent of these accountability things it's not us right it's not you know we're, we're not the ones our generations are not the ones that are implementing these laws and 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 and, and making slaves and, and, and segregations we're, we're the generation are trying to fix things we have generations before us that are involved in that but you know, at the end of the day if we if we keep the hatred going lines we're never going to get anywhere right we have to you know the, the one thing that really drew me to this cannabis community uh and and we've talked about it before when we first started going to all the events right we were we were always talking about the how everybody came together to all these events it didn't matter what color you were it didn't matter where you came from everybody was warm everybody was welcoming everybody would would greet you with a hug and a handshake and hand you the joint right um they didn't care that you were chinese brown african asian egyptian it didn't matter right um and and, and and everybody kind of teamed together for that one cause so i mean we've seen it happen we've seen it work right so you know the, and then the, maybe because this industry is one of those industries that are out more for the social equity change 
And that's maybe why it's working so well. But like, here's a great industry to look at. Right. I mean, it's, it, it, there's woman empowerment, there's racial empowerment. Uh, we, we, we're concerned about social equity. It's really a movement on the forefront of how we should change our laws within this country to me, you know what I mean? Uh, but I think to me it's education. Same thing with cannabis. If you don't know, then you, you, you don't know. Right. Um, but you have to be open-minded at the same note. Like you said, we could talk to a brick wall all day long, um, and we will get nowhere. Right. But you have to be open-minded. You have to be, and usually sadly it takes somebody that somebody knows to be affected or cured by something before somebody will change their minds. Like you said, you know, these cops that are put in these positions that will not even listen to science or, be open-minded enough to let you even communicate with the, the person. This worked for me. We are not criminals. This is a plan, right? Um, how, how do you proceed with anything around that, right? So are we in a time of waiting for these, the, this generation to outgrow their stay, basically? Or, you know, what, what do we do, man? What do we do? Let them all die off. <laughs> I don't know. One day at a time, mean, man. Right I mean, now, really? one day at a time. That's it, you know. I, you know, the, the good news and I think the positive takeaway from all this is look how far cannabis reform has come in the last five years. Right. Are there still prohibitionists? Yes. Are there still cops pounding the table talking about how dangerous it is and DHC is like bull? Yeah, but they're in the minority uh, and that minority is shrinking every day. Uh, more and more states are becoming legal. More and more states are adopting medical. More and more states are moving to adult use. More and more states are accepting, you know, with hemp being. We are on the right path. Not going as quick as I would like, not going as quick as a lot of people would like. Maybe we're not going to see federal full legalization and deschedulization in the next year or two, but we are on the right track. Uh, mm. We're less and less people are getting locked up, more and more acceptance. The public uh, perception on cannabis has never been higher. Uh, mm. So that's, I think, the ultimate takeaway. We still have a lot of work to do, um, but we're winning. Mm. We're getting there. We're winning hearts and we're winning minds, um, <laughs> you know, and, but people are getting the message. And that's the most exciting part. That's the best right. part. That's what keeps me getting up every morning. Even though Vermont had this stumbling block, we're not going to get our tax and regulated system. It's going to be a struggle. People are still going to get arrested. We are on the right track. And I know that it's only a matter of time before we do have a bill. It will happen. Um, and yeah. it will happen at the federal level. It will happen in New York. And I guarantee you, uh, in November, it's going to happen in New Jersey, which is going to be huge for these folks. Mm-hmm. Well, now does COVID does COVID help in a way to give these people time to to like look into this and and, and to feel and see, or is it you know hurt? No, 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 it's not marijuana policy, not legislators anyway. They're scrambling to do what they can do about COVID. You know, I, I mean, it's you know, but the, the, you know, people seeing uh, marijuana is considered you know medical cannabis is a uh, essential business at this time. If these mm-hmm. every little thing like that helps with public perception. Mm-hmm. It helps with normalization. It helps with doing away with the stigma. It helps with doing away with the propaganda. Um, oh, I thought, I thought marijuana killed people, but it's essential right. for medical. You know, that starts to <laughs> those beliefs. And that's important. People right. need to be able to question their own beliefs. You and if you pay... What yeah, you if, you pay attention, if you pay attention on a global scale, we're seeing countries now, countries, governments, countries that are putting money into research and they're supporting medical cannabis, at least we'll say the medical cannabis side of things, um, and, and, and are pushing for the research, right? We, we talk about this a lot, all these countries that are coming onto the research, onto the research, onto the research, onto the research, and it's proven positive. Nothing but great news has been coming out of the, these research labs. And then now the, the, now with government support, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we're really lacking in, in our government support here, as we all know, um, which we, we need to change. And that's coming, hopefully. Uh, Brandon, I want to give you the mic for a minute. I know you've been itching. I know you have a few things we want to talk about. When we talk about the racism, we've, we've talked about a lot of cool things happening. We've talked to Matt Bubba Berger today. We've talked about the Iotomis. And uh, you've sat there waving and, and cheering. And uh... No, I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm basically on the same page as everybody else is, you know. Um, I don't really think that... <laughs> I don't think it's right that there's companies out there making billions of dollars but there's still people locked up in jail and i think that that is not helping the nostalgia i think something on a federal level needs to be done so that we can move past this and that's the only way and you know just in my opinion that's really the only way we're going to get past the nostalgia is when the federal government says Cannabis is good for you. 
right how many how many lives are going to change when that happens like uh everybody's going to be like uh it's gonna be like santa claus is not real to so many people right because they're gonna be like wait but you've been telling us for 30 years that it's been bad right you've been showing me cracked eggs on pans you've been showing me stoners going through drive throughs that can't remember what gear they're in and smashing cars behind them you know what i mean like the the amount of tv commercials and propaganda that was put out you know what i mean and right. like tim said oh, earlier uh we dr- yeah my bad our bad yeah <laughs> yeah right it's like well it's like you said it's like you said you, you know you and brandon proved a great point earlier you know like uh the government it's like the government saying oops i fucked up like how do we get how does the government do that on a level that when it, we've been so entrenched by this prohibition culture and people are in jail like literally when the government says that every jail cell across the country should open up like no matter what, you know what I mean? Uh, at that point, anybody who's, who's, who's on a crime that is on a, uh, up to a certain level or however you want to do it, a crime that jail cell should open. You know what I mean? Oh. People should be reprimanded for it. Um, and uh, how do you do that? Like there is really no way of doing it. Right. I mean, it's not like you can give anybody a life back or a, a, a broken up family. Um, you know, th- there's no way to repair that, but, you know, there's only one way to do it, and that's just to to, do, to to make the first step, right? Let them out. Let's get them out. Let's give them jobs. Let's get them back in the community. Let's drop their charges. Let's make sure they can get a job and not rate as felons. Um, and let's introduce them back into this cannabis industry um, that they could really probably get great jobs at, uh, be a big part of, and be an influence in the within the the industry. As we all know, most of these guys that are sitting time, spending time in jail, are some of the probably the best people that we could have in our industry handling a crop handling a, some some part of it right um i don't know it's it's going to be an interesting next couple months lockdowns uh we're re, we're reissuing lockdowns we are still arresting people at borders <laughs> like we're still uh, burning down farms it's it, 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 it's still an amazing world guys again you guys ever want to reach out to us in the weeds you can find us very easily. Social media, reach out to us. Questions, comments, concerns. Uh, you have Timothy Fair from Vermont Campus Solutions. You guys can always reach out directly to him. Uh, any legal questions, he's our guy. He's who we recommend. Um, great source of knowledge, guys. Uh, and we also have Thomas Markholm of Vermont Grow Coaching, who comes on every every week with us, hangs out with us here, and, and, and is here for your grow coaching tips, guys. Um, if you guys ever have a question or a concern or an issue that you're experiencing your grows, Hook up with Thomas, send him a, send him a link, send him a message, and maybe we'll get it onto the show. Um, and we'll discuss your issue that you're having. Um, and maybe even, uh, be able to help you out with those issues. And as always, Brandon Barbario, my co-host, uh, and my canvas expert, love having you guys on another great show guys. Uh, we do have a great lamp of shows. I kind of want to go over because not usually do we ever book out because we're always scrambling and doing 800 things, but Next week, we have Cantrim of Vermont coming on uh, to discuss their machines and their unique approach to the industry and what's going on as a small Vermont company trying to compete in a, in a global industry. And also after that, we have the CryoCure guys coming on, which is an amazing technology that I think uh, doesn't get discussed enough um, that I've had the pleasure of being able to enjoy a lot lately um so it's a really unique um concept guys and and especially for patients this is where i think it it really can affect the the medical market uh and a lot of patients that continue to enjoy their smoke and coming on with the owners of cryo cure will be uh ed rosenthal and danny danko um so no confusion there with uh, rick simpson we don't quite have rick simpson on yet not yet we're getting there he's he's gotta be watching us somewhere hi rick how you doing um but uh, those are the next few shows coming up on. And then we also have um, some Canadian connections coming on, guys. We're going to get some Colombian connections coming on, guys. We have some Hawaiian connections we're working with to get on, guys. So it's going to be a very unique next few months of shows happening. Uh, we're actually going to get Andrew Subin and Timothy Fair to come on for a show, that uh, a specialized show. We're going to discuss some few certain points projects that we, we were discussing today um so guys stay tuned don't go anywhere if you like us if you love us go support us on social media go share us with your friends and uh, reach out to us let us know you're tuned in and we'll talk to you next week guys thank you for being on love you all have a good one guys good to see you brandon good to see you tom yep. so, as always you too. as always see you later.